Okay. Good evening. We are going to call the special meeting of the Walt Township Board of Education to order. Please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the Walt Township Board of Education meeting for which adequate notice under the Open Public Meeting Act was provided by a notice to the CoStar, Asbury Park Press, Township Administrator's Office, all Walt Township Public Schools, and the Board Administration Office on August 24, 2019. I'll take a roll call. Mr. Krupa? Here. Ms. Mangan? Here. Mr. Sanfilippo? Here. Mr. Sullivan? Here. Mr. Wondrak? Here. Mr. Adnesia? Here. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we apologize for uh, our few minute delay. We were over at Central School meeting looking at the, uh, the rooms in question. Uh, so what we are going to do is I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Smythe and he's going to introduce the professionals that are going to be giving the reports this evening. Okay, thank you. Uh, with us tonight, we have partner engineering, Mr. Brian Nemitz. Uh, they are our environmental consultant. And from our architectural firm, Spiesel, we have Barbara Malowitz and Justin Trudeau. Sorry if I mispronounced that, I apologize. Um, they're the architect of record and they were assisting us with the uh, repairs that were uh, determined to be required with regard to the trailers. But. Uh, Last week, we received the results of the air testing that we uh, performed within the classroom trailers. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Nemitz. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, I know the, the board has published my report. I'm sure a lot of you have questions. I'd like to give a real quick uh, synopsis of what we found. Hopefully, that'll answer some of your questions. And if not, I'll be more than happy to answer them at the end. Uh, most of you are aware that on August 19th, several members from Partner Engineering came out to the classroom trailers in question. Uh, they took a sample in, in each one of the four classrooms as well as two outside air samples as a control measure. Uh, when you're sampling for mold, there is no set guideline, no state, federal, nothing across the globe that says this is good or bad. So you compare inside air samples to outside air samples. The theory is you're walking down the street, you're not exposed to anything more inside than you are outside. Very simple. So we sampled in each one of the four classrooms. Two of the classrooms came back with uh, slight issues, which of course we notified the board. And I'm going to go to it so I make sure I have the exact species that we found. In classroom one, so when you look at the results, you generally look at, there's several ways to look at them. You look at the total concentrations, which is on bold on the bottom, says total fungi. So you look at total concentrations inside versus outside. Then you also look at the speciation. Speciation is generally a little more important in some cases. In this case, I felt it was. Cladosporium, elevated levels of cladosporium is found in classroom number one. Cladosporium is a common outdoor mold. Uh, if I were to take a, uh, an outside sample uh, in front of your house, my house, Mr. Smythe's house, we're going to come up with a lot of cladosporium. You're also going to come up with a, probably a lot of aceospores and basidiospores. So finding cladosporium is not that uncommon. Finding it higher inside than the outsides gave me a little pause, and I said, well, all right, it's a little higher than I wanted to see it. Let's be a, on the cautious side, and we'll flag that one. Uh, classrooms two and four, fine, all within industry standards. Then we got to classroom number three, where we had um, catomium, which is elevated. Now, catomium was not found in any of the outside air samples. So right off the bat, I said, well, it's a species that wasn't found outside, so there's probably something going on inside. Ketomium is generally found inside environments when there's wet, wet building materials. So we took a look at that and said, all right, well, let's, let's flag that one as well. So we, we, uh, as soon as we got the results, sent an email over to the board, or to actually Bob Romano here, said, this is what we're thinking. We're going to issue a report. We issued a report, which you guys have seen. In that report, we also said that, well, some remediation efforts have to be done. Now, knowing at the same time the board was also working towards refurbishing those trailers, we, th we went back and forth a little bit. We said, all right, let's do, the re let's do the rehab, make sure we're not disturbing any mold, make sure we're not making anything worse, but let's take out all the bad materials to begin with that was wood rot or, or otherwise. So that is kind of, that's really what we did up to this date. 
So that's a real quick synopsis of all this. I know you have questions, so I'll be more than happy to answer them. Oh, I'm sorry, the board goes first. My apologies. Okay, thank you. At this, prior to, oh, go ahead. Prior to doing so, can you, uh, you know, touch on the part of your report based on your vis visual <coughs> observations of the trailers when you were performing the tests? Sure. So when we walked into the trailers, um, obviously we've all seen pictures of the outside. There were some issues on the outside. Uh, on the inside, the trailers looked unremarkable with the exception of uh, number one, which we had known had already had a piece removed from the inside. Um, so outside of that, the trailers looked fine. We, uh, we were actually just over there a little bit ago. I took a look at it. When you, look, when you see mold growth inside, mold grows on cellulose-based materials quickly. Cellulose-based materials meaning paper, wood products, fabrics, like, like honestly the fabrics you see here on these chairs, that would grow. So when I was there, the first thing I'd looked at was the American flag, which always grows fast, and the teacher's chair, which is generally made out of cloth. Then, and by the way, I didn't see anything on any of those. Then you start looking underneath the tables and the chairs. There's a, there's a thing that I call Cheeto fingers. Kids come back into the classroom, they got Cheetos all over their fingers, they wipe them on their pants, wipe them on, all the mothers here know they wipe them on their pants, right, deal with the orange stuff. They wipe them on the tables too. They wipe them underneath. When mold starts growing, they look for a food source. Those little Cheeto crumbs, that's what they're looking for. The mold will start growing there. So you look for the underneath and on top of underneath the desk and then on top. We didn't see that either. I've, t I've seen it to the point where I've actually seen like fingerprints growing in mold, mold moldy fingerprints because of the, the Cheeto fingers. So I didn't see that. The only area of concern I, I frankly I saw was in classroom one where that wall was opened up. Is that, does that answer your question, Brian? Yes. All right. This, um, I, I have one question. Sure. When you're, you're looking at the American flag, you're looking at um, cloth, like it's, such as the seats, you're looking for just visible growth. Absolutely. Would you... Would there be another test you would do, like a swab test or something of that nature, to pick up anything that might not be visible to the eye? So swab is associated with culturable samples. When you take a culturable sample, it's generally associated when someone has a specific health concern, like, like a child has aspergillosis, for example. And, and what is that? Yeah, it's, it's, a disease, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a disease of the lungs where okay. you actually have mold growing in your lungs. That's when you do a swab sample for culturable. Now, to jump a little off of that, what you can do is take what's called a tape lift sample or a bulk sample. You can cut out a piece. Frankly, I wouldn't cut out a piece of the American flag, but you understand my point. Yes. You, can t you can either cut out a bulk piece, which we do a lot with the sheetrock or something like that, or you can take a tape lift sample, simply a microscope slide with sticky tape on it. You put it down, you pick it up, and it gets sent to the lab for direct examination. Uh, we could do that, uh, generally speaking. Most times, if it's not visible, you're gonna come up with nothing. Uh, it can happen, but generally not. So we generally only sample, we don't generally only do a surface sample if we know there's a specific issue. Okay. And thank you. Do any of the members of the board have questions? I, just as a clarification, would there be an expectation that there would be mold on that sample, though, since there's mold it, that it, you're found through the air <clears throat> test? Not necessarily. So I, the, as I said before, the cladosporium in one, sample one is a common outdoor mold. My guess is door was open, wind blew in that day, it was windy when everybody was leaving, and you buttoned up the, the classrooms and they weren't utilized for two months, I guess, ballpark. So it could have just been a high cloud of day outside with the wind blowing and it got trapped in the building. You know, that, that, that's possible. The catomium, I didn't see a source, but without ripping apart walls looking for stuff, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't answer that question. I, I, I'm sorry, a follow-up question. Sure. In, in regards to, um, okay, so the air sample, we, the district, uh, it was reported that some of the desks were taken out of uh, the building. Uh, we were just over there, and I witnessed two classrooms that had the desks taken out. The two classrooms that are in question, everything is still in the classroom. So uh, the, just to be clear, the two the two rooms, according to your report, that didn't find anything, those were the rooms where the desks and chairs were removed. Correct. So with that, can you talk about the, the cleaning procedures um, for something like that? Even though nothing was found, what the district did uh, just as a, an additional precaution. All right. So 
Uh, obviously, we, I work for the district. I talk, spent a lot of time talking to Bob Romano here, going back and forth about what we want to do. Generally speaking, when you're cleaning a hard surfaces, and it's only the hard surfaces that were removed, to my understanding, the chairs and the desks and such, you, been, you generally wipe that down with a 10% bleach solution or an EPA-approved biocide, which is my understanding that happens. So that's what you do. And you take, you take the materials out of the classroom first, then wipe it down outside before you bring it into a new classroom. This way you don't worry about cross-contaminating a new classroom. Okay. So, Mr. Romano, do you know uh, specifically which one we used? Was it the bleach or was it a, a EPA product? We used our district product. So it's a peroxy-based solution, a fungicide. Okay. All right. Thank you. Does any board member have a question? Um, <clears throat> I appreciate uh, your report. Um, could you maybe just give kind of like a layman's um, overall impression of, of the buildings um, that, uh, as you were over there and, and going through things? Uh, can you clarify that? What do you mean by my impression of the building? I don't uh, know what you're trying to get Im at. Impression of, of, of the, the mold samples and things like that, like uh, in terms of did you think, do, do you find this to be uh, very light or very heavy or? Well, that, that's, <laughs> I can't necessarily answer it the way you probably want me to, but I'll explain to you why. Okay. So mold samples are a snapshot in time. If I take a sample, let's just take the cameraman for lack of a term. If I take a sample in his house today, if something were to change in a week, it'll be different. There'll still be mold present, but it'll be different species, different amounts of spores. As the wind goes, so does the mold. Um, I can tell you in the two, three out of the four classrooms were unremarkable when I looked at them on the inside. The only issue I saw was that wall that was moved in, in number one. Other than that, it was rather relatively unremarkable. Uh, is it also possible that when that wall was removed that that is what would then have released the, the, the elevated levels into the classroom? Certainly possible. And is it also possible that they were, there might not have been mold there previous to the wall being removed? That's possible. I can't comment on things prior okay. to me seeing okay. it. I, I do have yes. a question. It might be also a comment, but... Um, so uh, you said you work for the district or you've done work for the I've district? I've done a lot of work for the district. Okay. Over the years, I've had numerous contracts with the district, right. my company. Thank you. I understand now. Um, and what you're saying with regards to condition contributing and things change, um, is the work that you've done for the district in the past testing that has been done in the various buildings in the district, or is it something else? Um, uh, both. I've done other things, and I've done mold testing. Okay. And is there, um, and this would be to anybody at the table, is there a regular testing of our facilities related to this type of concern? Because um, it's not unusual for, for schools or other places where you have a lot of public in the uh, buildings to have that done. I, I do recall something uh, when my youngest was at Central where there was some notification about that. So, Generally speaking, uh, none of my clients, in, including this client, uh, does proactive sampling of their schools or hospitals or residences or buildings or anybody else I work for. We're generally called in uh, as, on an as-needed basis when there's something suspect, for mold anyway. So I don't know, I mean, to my knowledge, I've, I haven't done anything. I don't know if they've retained anybody else to do that over the years. Is the uh, service of air quality checks something that you also are involved with? or? Yes, I, I, would, I would consider that uh, my specialty. That's what I'd like to do the most, in the air quality and mold. And, and that's not done on any scheduled basis in the district? For mold sampling, no. Each... Each public entity is required to have indoor air quality management plans, which I know I wrote for them. Um, How about the air quality <laughs> thing? Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's more or less, it's something that the state came out in 2007. Don't quote me on that date. It may have been eight or six, but uh, basically saying how the school, any public entity, frankly, not just a school, has to respond in case there's a mold issue or water infiltration. And as I said, I know we wrote, these, wrote them for them years ago. Thank you. You're welcome. So when the wall was 
open. Could mold get in there? According to what you're telling me? Mold get into the wall or into the no, classroom? No, get into the classroom. Sure. So if the wall was open and there was a big space. Sure. So what you would need is you need a, a disturbance <laughs> of that wall at some point. Very rarely, and it can happen. I don't want to say it doesn't happen, but say here's your wall, all right, and it's open. Those spores are not going to just start, you know, shooting out into the classroom. They would need some sort of wind vibration. I mean, I don't want to make like an earthquake. So that's why you like said that. that you didn't want to disturb it. Exactly. Got it. You don't want to disturb and, things. And just for clarification, what we're referring to is an area that the siding on the outside was removed as well as the sheetrock on Correct. the inside. Oh, yeah, so yeah. it's basically open to the outside. It's in the picture. Okay. I have an additional question. So in regards to um, the, the particular kind of uh, species you found, it, it's on typically paper and things like that. Books that were in the classroom, paper in the classroom, how should that, those things be handled? Should they be thrown away? Should they be, is there some kind of cleaning for them? Um, it's very difficult to clean paper. I can tell you I saw nothing visual on mm -hmm. the stuff I inspected. Obviously, we did not go through every single book. But on everything that we inspected, we did not see any. any at no point did we see any readily visible mold growth, it, with the exception of that one little wall area where there was some suspect stuff. Okay. But the, the air quality, so in the room itself, where did you take the samples from? Was it, was it close to the, the part that was open? Generally, was in, it the, on the generally in the center. In the center. So, so if the, the air quality, and let's just say that maybe it's been like that and, and it's moving around, then it would get on the paper and get into books. So the district should not use those books going forward. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that one way or the other, to be honest with you. If you really wanted to be sure, you could take a couple surface samples on it to confirm there's no mold growth on it. Uh, that being said, in those rooms, if I'm not mistaken, everything was behind paper and other stuff uh, in a, as a way of, of a barrier to begin with, which is common in most schools. I'm sure you guys do for the same thing. You just don't want the books or whatever else in the bookcases to get dusty. For, for the summer, they pack it up for yeah, the exactly. summer. Exactly. So, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's why you do it. So, okay. Um, and then the teacher's personal belongings in the classroom, I mean, they have books that they purchase, um, pictures, different things like that. Knowing what, what's going on, um, how should that be handled? Should there be, uh, some kind of special cleaning of the, of their stuff? Is it just okay for them to take it out? Um, can you give us some feedback on that? So in, in a matter to be cautious uh you know, we have in, i have in, the partner has instructed the, the school to any hard surfaces should be taken out of there clean and that could be a picture frame tip okay. taken out clean before given to the teacher um if how about the, the the thing inside the picture frame let's say if there's a picture uh, is it sealed and okay or that would, that'd be a that'd be a piece by piece okay. I, I mean it, it's hard to say i mean you know multiple sports are very tiny we can't see them so I would say wipe stuff down, just to be on the safe side. As far as cellulose based materials, books, personal stuff like that, uh, that might be a case by case. Uh, take a look at it, you know, wipe it down. If, if really, you know, push comes to shove, we can sample a couple items. I wouldn't sample everything, uh, but you can sample a couple items to give a level of, of safety. Okay. Any other points? Security, numbers? not safety, excuse me. I have a few. Sure. All right. Uh, first, how and when were you contacted about this issue? Um, contacted either by a phone call or a text message from Bob saying, give me a call the day prior. On what day would that be? The uh, 18th? We sampled on the 19th, so I'm going to say the 18th, I guess, without looking at a calendar. All right. And when you went in there and did the testing, the doors, were those open, the windows open? Um, the windows were closed. There was a door that was open, to my understanding. Do you know how long that door was open for? No idea. To ventilate the area? I'm no. sorry, was it last part? To ventilate the area inside? I, I, I don't know. Okay. Now, with this concentration of uh, Building 1, Cladosporium, yeah. do you know how long that would take to grow at that concentration? Uh, nothing on here says that the, those, those are growing spores. That just says that was airborne. Uh, so to say how long it would take to grow, no, I cannot. Because it, to my knowledge, it's not growing on the inside. It's a common outdoor mold, so it's probably blown in. 
Um, that being said, there are things called primary, secondary, and tertiary colonizers. Different mold species grow at different rates. Uh, that being said, it would be honestly impossible for anyone to hazard a guess as to how long that mold may have been there or may have not been there. Uh, can you comment or do you have any educational opinion about the health effects on this mold spores? Mold in general, and that goes, this goes for all mold spores, no matter what name you see on there, is an allergen. So, I mean, let's just say there's 100 people in this room. Let's just say all hundreds are, are, are exposed to cladosporium. Three of us might sneeze and the rest of us might not. Or 50 of us might sneeze and cough. It's an allergen, just like cat dander or dog, <laughs> dog dander. Affects everyone differently. All right, now, in your, when they're coining this hard services or coining the area, would you recommend or personal protective equipment like masks, gloves? Yes, we've talked about that. Uh, I've talked about that with the district already about making sure that they're, they're, whoever's doing it, whether it be employees or a subcontractor, has uh, PPA, personal protective equipment. All right, thank you. Side, side note with, with that. Does that include just gloves or is that an N95 mask also? Um, <clears throat> N95 masks are not really designed for mold spores. At that point, you're looking at uh, P100 filters on a, on a, a half face respirator. Okay, thank you. Would that be for all classrooms or just the two that there's positive? The, the, the two that were outside of industry standards? Exactly. And, and, and just so we're clear, too, um, where the, the cladosporium is at, like, 6580 or whatever it is, so that's, the, um, that's a classroom that was open where the wall was open, and there was sort of like a breezeway coming through Correct. Uh, from there, which is, I mean. In all honesty, it was likely caused by the breezeway, but I can't confirm that. So to be on the safe side, I felt with kids being present, let's do the right thing. Let's make sure everything's clean. Why take a chance? So uh, typically, w with the number that, that you have here in Classroom 1, how long would it take for something like that to get that high in a sealed, in a sealed room? Day, weeks, months, years? It depends on a lot of variables. Food source. I mean, of course, we know we have the food source. Every building that has gypsum wallboard is a food source. Wood is a food source. Uh, moisture, you need moisture, uh, you need the right temperature conditions. So I really couldn't comment on how long it would take to grow because I really, there's, there's too many variables, so there's no way to really answer that. So, so this particular one, it, it grows. So it doesn't grow in the air, it grows on something. Sure. And then because something's disturbed, that's what makes it airborne. Generally speaking, yes. Generally? Yeah. What's the alternative? Well, I mean, it is a spore. So, I mean, it can sporulate. If it's growing someplace, it can become airborne that way. Okay. All but right. that generally happens out the outside. Okay. Thank you. Any other board members? Any questions? I do. Go. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. Uh, would there be any standards on allowing kids back into those classrooms? Uh, uh, standards? No. In, um, in New Jersey, there are no mold regulations. Uh, federally, there are no mold regulations. There's EPA guidelines. Um, that being said, industry standards, as I, I kind of alluded to before, you want to make sure the outside samples are greater than the inside samples, and you want to make sure the speciation is similar within the same order of magnitude uh, per individual species. So that's what we'd be going with. Uh, but there's no federally or state enforceable standard saying if you hit this number of spore, you can't enter or can't enter. Thank you. You're welcome. One last question. Sure. Why would a contractor walk off the job or walk away from it? What is know. he I'm afraid of? I'm not that contractor. I have no idea what he saw. I wasn't involved in the product at that time. We are now going to turn to our architect. Wait, can we ask questions? We, so, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to hear from all the professionals because their report's very short, and then we're going to open it up for questions for all of them. Can I make a suggestion? It would be easier if we just had his questions go first while everybody's fresh in their mind. 
we're gonna we're gonna take every all the professionals at first and then go from there. Um, hi, I'm Barbara Malevich. I'm the um, project manager from Spiso Architects. Oh, here we go. Um, we're from Spiso Architects. Uh, we were called in um, uh, a few days or about a week ago um, after the repairs had started on the trailers. Um, the skirting, which is the exterior bottom portion, was removed. And at that point, the contractor that was working noticed some wood that was deteriorated. Uh, then we were called in to take a look at it and determine what the best remedy was with the um, deteriorated wood. Uh, Let me just backtrack and I'll just go through it again so everybody can hear me. Uh, we were called in after the contractor um, had removed part of the skirting around the uh, trailers. Ms. Cross, please don't call out. You'll be able to ask questions at the end and fill in any holes you think are there. Once the skirting was removed, there were areas that were noticed to be deteriorated, which is the wood portion, part of the wood portion. We were called in to take a look at it and um, decide a course of action to remedy the situation. Uh, we were out here, we did inspect it, and we did provide sketches to remedy um, those situations to repair them. We provided the sketches to, to, the, um, to the business administrator, um, and those sketches, those um, details were being implemented. Uh, we looked at the um, deteriorated conditions. There were um, areas that required a little bit more repair than um, other areas, uh, but generally speaking, um, everything uh, seemed in fairly uh, repairable condition. Um, that is the extent of um, what we saw there. And again, um, we did re we provided sketches uh, to remedy the situation and repair the uh, deteriorated areas of wood. When, when you say sketches, what were the sketches of? Uh, there were details to show how to repair the areas that were deteriorated. And the, the areas that you found, could you just talk about those? Um, one of the areas was the rim joist, which is the um, area at the bottom below the trailer, um, which again was exhibiting or was showing signs that it was deteriorated. Okay. And, and what else? Uh, we, um, Justin, I guess we'll have Justin speak yes. to that a little bit more. Okay. Um, so um, there were more or less three different conditions that we ran into. Um, the worst of which was um, there uh, around the entire trailer, there were um, two rim joists. Um, in the worst situation, both the rim joists um, were damaged, as well as the um, actual joists um, framing into that rim joist. Is, is that one particular trailer or was it on both trailers? It was one particular location on one trailer. Which trailer and which location? It is the trailer closest to the building on the, I'm not sure what the orientation was, but uh, if you were driving into the site, it would be the first trailer you would encounter at that location. And is, is that the trailer that was found to have the higher elevations of uh, in the air quality test? That one was the one that had the, that was uh, trailer uh, location TCU one. And, and so that's the same one we're talking about? Correct, yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, so uh, yes, that was the worst of it. The um, other uh, areas, the trailers did have um, two rim joists um, so in some locations that needed to be replaced, as well as the majority of it was only a single rim joist that needed to be replaced. The backup joist was in good condition. And, and where was that one located? Um, it varied on both build, on both trailers. So, uh, so multiple locations? Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do any board members have questions? Can you explain the damage that you witnessed and how long it took for that to persist to get to that state? I can't speak on how long it would have taken to get to that state, but um, mostly it was uh, moisture-related issues. So um, the wood itself was wet. Is that just wood or were there like metal, rust or anything like that? Um, all of the steel that was supporting the structure was in good condition. It was most, it was, our concern was mainly the wood. Mr. Wondra? Did you explain this to the contractor? 
yes, the contractor was on site walking through the um, walking through the same, all these conditions with us. And what was his reaction? Uh, it, Did he walk away, or is this the contract that it stayed? I am not aware. The, the contractor that was with us stayed the entire time for the duration of the walkthrough. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Do you know who that contractor was? Um, I, offhand, I don't remember his name. Um, I, it was HTHI, it was the contractor. Yes. And he had full intentions of implementing the repairs that were recommended uh, by the engineer and architects. And can you back up to when you were, when and how you were contacted and by whom? We were contacted, on, I want to make sure I get the dates right. Uh, we were contacted on, no, it was uh, August 16th. Um, we arrived on site and met with the contractor in the morning around 8 a.m. on August 19th. Um, we provided sketches um, the following day on August 20th. Who were you contacted by? We were, um, I was not personally contacted, but, but the business, business administrator, Brian Smythe, contacted um, Steve Siegel from our office. All right, was that by phone or email? By phone, I believe. All right, thank you. Any other questions? No? Okay. Uh, sorry. We, we, we had a, a, a discussion about the, uh, the permits. Could you, could you just explain the situation with the permits? Because there, there was a lot of talk that the town shut down the, the work. Um, which might not be accurate. Okay, with regard to the permits, the, the work that was uh, initially you know, contemplated uh, was, was removing and replacing the exterior wood siding and then wrapping the uh, trailers in vinyl siding to protect from further water intrusion um, so we didn't have to continually patch and repair the exterior wood siding. Um, a permit is not required for that work. It was replacement in kind. Um, it was anticipated that there were certain studs that were going to be uh, possibly damaged underneath the windows, but it would be a replacement in kind uh, or sistering, and uh, it wasn't extensive enough to re require a permit. Uh, however, when the outer rim joist was being removed and it involved sistering up floor joists and requiring the need for a, uh, a professional engineer to provide details, uh, a, a permit would be necessary for that type of repair work. However, you would not be able to prepare the plans that were prepared without the exploratory work that was performed. So although the building inspector did arrive on site after we submitted the permit, uh, and the permit we included on there was for uh, replacing wood siding and installing vinyl siding. It didn't have the specifics of the wood framing because the extent of which was unknown at that time. Uh, the building inspector came out to the site, told us that we could not proceed with the work, uh, but meaning the rehabilitation work. We couldn't reconstruct or replace any of the framing. We couldn't sister up um, any of the floor joist. However, we can continue with the exploratory work or continue with the removal of areas of the damaged siding uh, or the siding along the perimeter rim joist so that the metal could be cut away and it, the, the extent of any wood damage to the rim joist could be identified and then included in the plan or on the plan that the architect was providing and so that the various details which as indicated, there were three, one where the single rim joist was replaced, somewhere the double rim joist was replaced, and the detail where the double rim joist and the floor joist were being sistered, that the building inspector required that that would be identified on a floor plan. In order to do that, um, the wood siding had to be removed so that those areas could be identified. So the work that was performed out at the site uh, was permissible and a permit was not required for that extent of the work. However, to start making repairs um, to the rim joist, replacing the rim joist, and installing the details provided by the engineer, by the engineer and architect, could not be performed until the permit was issued after submitting the details from the architect. Thank you. All right, at this time, we're going to open. I'm sorry. I mean, I think the other, you know, 
uh, reason for the meeting or, or wanting to have an FNF meeting is, you know, at the last board meeting, <clears throat> the decision was made to stop work on the trailers uh, and then uh, also that the students would not be uh, housed in, in the trailers for this year. Uh, however, we're going to be looking for direction moving forward on what do we want to do with the trailers? Are we going to scrap them and have them removed, which there's going to be a cost associated with them? Are we going to do a, you know, a, 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 a minor enclosure to try to prevent further damage, but nothing too extensive? Um, or are we going to look to make the repair so that they can either be utilized in the future uh, as needed or being repurposed still by use of the district? And uh, one of the reasons why we asked the architect to, to be involved in this meeting was to be able to provide those options and tell us what the requirements are because, you know, there would be DOT requirements with, uh, regardless on what the decision of the board would be, but also trying to move forward, you know, we don't want to continue to lose months and leave the trailers exposed because we started removing the outside siding. There, you know, the, the framing underneath is, is essentially exposed. There's building paper on it, but it's nowhere near uh, watertight. So uh, if the architects can, if Barbara, if you can elaborate on the three options that have basically been presented, either remove, temporarily, you know, protect, or to move forward with restoring the trailers. Right. Um, so at this point, um, as um, Brian had mentioned, um, in order to, at this point, the trailers have to be made we weather tight at, um, just to protect it from deteriorating further. That's one of the first options. Um, the second option is to continue the repairs and potentially uh, use the trailers for another purpose. And the third option is to remove the trailers from the site. Uh, uh, all those all those obviously uh, involve, um, you know, some sort of monies that need to be expended for that. Okay. Is there any idea on what cost would be, not to tie you to a number, uh, but just for conversation purposes of the different options available? Well, uh, I think you have a cost to continue the repairs um, and doing what you're doing, which is to complete the work that was started already. Um, so um, whatever amount that was that that is still remains mm -hmm. maybe with some additional cost um, uh, to to close it up with plywood again that would be the least amount at this point and uh, again and to remove them um, that would be the most amount I think at this point um, again we, we'd have to take a little a little bit further because we have to go through DOE process to remove them um, they have to be, the utilities have to be capped. Um, it's not a straightforward, just pull them off the site um, issue. Okay. So, didn't really want to go in that direction right now, but w th this came up before, and it's my personal opinion that they have um, been overutilized. Their, their usefulness to us uh, has expired. So, I personally, and, and I'm just one, and I'm going to, ask everybody else's input I don't think they should be used for classrooms now or any time in the future um, as for uh, reutilization of them uh, one of the things I, I, I suggested and uh, it was mentioned that there could be a larger cost associated with it but I'm going to share it with the board and the public is that if we do uh, have the ability to park the buses at the airport we could repurpose it for an office and a lounge, fix them correctly um, to the point that there's no question whatsoever that the trailer is good for staff to be in and it'd be a lounge or, or something to that effect. There might be a significant cost associated with it moving them up there. That would have to be something we're looked at. Uh, looked at. Um, it was also mentioned um, possibly maybe using it for office space uh, you know, we've talked about our, uh, one of the things, the special services, the building, that the old farmhouse they use um, is going to need significant repairs. And um, I, I guess the space isn't really that large where this particular spot might be better suited for that. So that's an option. So I think before we get into maybe uh, tearing them down, th there's could be other uses for them that we could do. Um, but using it as a classroom is not on the table in my opinion. So I would open it up to the board to uh, see what you think. 
I, I would agree for not using them as classrooms. Um, uh, I would also, um, in, in terms of the uh, architects um, who said, it seemed to me, and, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but they are fixable, right? Um, if that's that, is, that is correct, yes. Okay. Um, so uh, I, if it's costs, and I'm just throwing numbers out there, $50,000 to get rid of them and $50,000 to fix them, and we would be able to use them for different purposes, I think that the money would be well spent, you know, repairing and repurpose as opposed to just removing them. Um, especially, um, you know, it, there's different things in different mm -hmm. places that we could use for offices. Um, like you said, it may be possible um, for the airport or possibly mm -hmm. how. Um, so I would agree with um, all of that sentiment. And, and if, because if that is the sentiment of the board that we're not going to use them for classrooms, then what we would do for, I don't know, if the first or the next FNF meeting, which is September 9th, is try to identify what those costs would be to remove um, and restore the site, uh, and also what the cost would be to refurbish for the purposes of repurposing, well, whether on site or, and then additionally, if they were to be repurposed off site, and then try to have a, a cost benefit analysis mm -hmm. to see w what would be, um, you know, the best solution. Absolutely. Well, let's see what the rest of the board thinks, too. Yes. So another concern I just want to bring to everyone's attention is the fact that we have students on the exterior of the main building. So safety is a huge concern regarding lockdowns, fire drills, and whatnot. You kind of want to have all students all together in one building. So moving forward, I don't believe it's in our best interest to have students in trailers on an exterior. Thank you for saying that. I know because um, Aaron had mentioned that when we were over at the trailers earlier, so I didn't want to like jump yeah, on I, your <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I, didn't I got to give my I teacher input. It out there for yeah, I didn't want to steal her her great comment. So, Thank you. Mr. Wondrak, Mr. Krupa, any thoughts? Whatever we do with the trailers, we have to have a plan for inside the school. That's temporary. Yes. That's just temporary. So we're acting like everything's all done. We'll get rid of it. There's a big, th there's a big cost analysis that has to be done here when we make that decision. And uh, yeah, we can repurpose them. I'm in agreement with regards to not using them for classrooms. I was very disappointed when I saw my son in that yes. classroom three years ago. Um, I do appreciate the expert information that was given in regards to whether we can repurpose them, reuse them, repair them. Um, but I do agree that there's got to be a much broader long range plan for what we are doing in this district with all facilities. This mm -hmm. is just the tip of the iceberg. And I don't want to go to, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different things tonight have some focus and move mm -hmm. but um i agree we have to have a more yes. comprehensive plan so so just on a side note i'll touch on what, what we started um is we, we've started um looking at all the facilities are they're doing walkthroughs uh, looking at every space, making sure that it's being utilized correctly. And as part of that, we're also doing a demographic study because of the COA housing that's looming here in Wall um, and how that's going to impact the district. So one of the things we'll have to seriously look at is the way we handle the distribution of students to the schools. Um, what that basically means is we might have to redistrict. And, you know, there could be a situation where redistricting would save us maybe uh, a 15 million dollar addition let's say because we're just moving people around so those are things that we're going to be looking at in the next several months uh, as the reports start coming in and we're gonna have to make decisions based on okay do we need an addition on a school or do we need to just redistrict so that process is beginning and it's absolutely a very important thing that we're doing with that john all right i want to back up to uh you were talking about the wood. Uh, are you comfortable with saying, expressing your safety concern, security concern of that wood, like the condition it's in? Like on a scale of one to 10, one being the best, 10 being the worst right now? Right now, where the 
where the wood is. All the wood that we've had concerns with, we recommend it to be removed and replaced. So what kind of security or safety would that be posed to anybody that's inside those trailers, like stepping through the floor or anything like that, collapse? The, we did not do an investigation on the, all we looked at as part of our investigation was the perimeter around the building where the skirting had been removed and indicated sections of that. We did not do a full structural analysis on all the floor joists. We did not do um, a full comprehensive floor joist analysis. So you did not go underneath that open section there? You, yes, we did. You, you did go underneath? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And what would it take to secure that facility right now? Is what's there now sufficient? Or you, we're going to have kids there uh, climbing around. That oh, in terms of securing the facility for, we would, um, making it weather tight and locking it up. We would recommend plywood be installed in any open portion so um, no children or animals or anything else can enter those buildings. How about fencing? Anything like that? I mean, fencing could be installed to secure the site, yes. All right, thank you. Anybody else, anything? No? Okay. All right, so at this time, we're going to open the meeting for questions of any of these professionals. Uh, what we're going to do is one at a time. Um, people don't have to, you don't have to all get up and, and wait in line, but you come up to the microphone, state your name, uh, where you live. We also have one up on top if you can't walk down the stairs. And... Hopefully, Hi. we'll get all your questions answered. Hi, Ms. my name Cross. is Betsy Cross. I live in Wall Township. I have a question for a partner assessment. You mentioned that Mr. Smythe called you on the 18th. I noticed that was a Sunday. Did he call you from his cell phone or from his from his work? Okay. Did Bob? Okay, because you came in on the 19th. I'm sorry. Could you okay. just make sure your microphone's on and it's close so everybody can My hear? apologies. No, Thank you. So to answer your question on Mike, my apologies. It was Bob Romano who called me, and generally he texts me and says, hey, I got a problem. There's an issue in, a, in a school, whatever the case may be. Can you give me a call? Okay. It can, may have been a Sunday. It, it may have not. I do not know. Can, can you go back and check? I think I'd like to get the date and the time and exactly what that text message said. I'm sure Mr. Romano has a copy of it. Um, I happened to be there when you're... Two workers were there, and um, okay. there was another parent that was there. Um, could you tell me which door was open? You mentioned one door was open. Which building? Uh, off one, the top two, of my head, I do not know. Okay. Can you get back to me on that? Was it building one, two, three, or four? When they walked into the building and they saw somebody cleaning with a HEPA vacuum in all the rooms, can you find out? Does anybody know up here on the dais who called ahead to the cleaning people, to the custodians, and said, could you get over to trailers one, two, three, and four this morning? Because we have partner engineering coming in to do testing, and we'd like you to start cleaning. So if you could answer that question now, does, does Mr. Romano or Mr. Smythe, Ms. Dyer, did somebody put in a call, and who was that? Ms. Cross, if you have questions for anybody other than the professionals, please direct them to the chair, and I will direct them out. Okay. Uh, so... Mr. Adonisio? So I, I, I heard you. Okay. Thank you. So can, can we, we give a, a, a little bit of a timeline of how the, the cleaning aspect of this came? So the construction, the deconstruction was being done, the exploratory work, um, the testing was going to be done. Uh, was it pre-planned that the cleaning was going to take place prior to uh, calling partners to come out? Or... How did this whole thing come together? Before that, Mr. Nemitz, can you clarify whether like the cleaning would actually benefit the air test or perhaps skew the, the air test? If they were cleaning during the air test, if they're disturbing everything, it'd probably make it worse. So. Did you have that plan, that question, Mr. Smythe? No, you actually, asked the question. Mr. Uh, I, I didn't yeah. ask you to ask him that question. Uh, actually, Mr. Cross, asked, you asked the that, question. That was a question that I asked uh, when we were over at the trailers. Um, some, some of the questions that have been asked, I've already asked and, and received answers to. So I guess my question is, who called over and asked for somebody to get out the HEPA vacuums and start vacuuming the trailers before they came in to assess? Mr. Romano? We stock HEPA vacuums. 
we stock HEPA vacuums to do regular cleaning. Um, the custodians started cleaning those trailers um, the day that is in question when we came out to do samples. In the morning, I had custodians start to do regular summer cleaning in the trailers. Why? Because we were doing exterior work to the trailers, and I want to get the inside um, started immediately because we were behind the eight ball. We needed to get teachers starting to get into those rooms to do their thing. So that's why I told the custodians, you know what, start going in, start cleaning. Um, we also had a uh, county superintendent coming in. We had some people walking through, so we started cleaning. But the HEPA vacuum is stocked. We have that as an item that we use in, in most of our buildings to just do our regular everyday cleaning. But if we're coming in to do these tests, the worst thing to do is start sending people in. I, I don't get that at all. Um, my other question is the protective gear. You mentioned you told them, did you put it in writing that they needed to wear protective gear, maybe the P100 filters? How did you get that over to them? Because we had three people walking in that were custodians, and all of them did not have on any protective gear. So are you going to be liable if they sue the township, I mean the, the Board of Education? Because we had people going in there, we did not have a written report back yet. Did you say, jump in there, start getting desks out, start cleaning them? We cannot make a recommendation without our report. So that's my next question. Who put in the phone call and said, get in those buildings, we don't have the reports back yet, but go ahead and then start taking out desks and chairs and start cleaning them with that product that Mr. Romano just told us about. Mr. Adonisio, do you know who that is? Mr. Smythe, can you answer that? Yeah, the classrooms that were uh, accessed to remove desks were the classrooms that there was no uh, concern on. Who called them and told them to start doing that without the written report? We didn't have a written report yet. We had a verbal report. Maybe he called, maybe he texted. I have no idea. So I'd like if, to if, know. If I can clarify that for you a little bit. Yeah. When we get the results, standard operating procedure, I call my client immediately and say, these are what the results are. What time did you call him? I have no idea. I don't Could you check that out and just let us know? I well, do. I mean, you should keep records. This is very important. I, do, you, do you know what day you called? Uh, I can tell you when I, I can tell you what day I called. Cause I be the guess day it was Wednesday because they uh, went the, in. The results were analyzed on uh, August 20th, so it would be that day. Tuesday? You got them back the same day? You got them back on the 20th? We, 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 we sampled them on the 19th. We received the results on the 20th. And then you sent the people in Wednesday on the night 21st. they removed the, the desk from the classrooms. There was a verbal given that these two classrooms Correct. were uh, within industry standards. Those were the classrooms. Staff went in to remove the desks and chairs. Who gave the verbal and to who? I would give the verbal to these gentlemen. To, to who? Romano. Did you give it to Mr. Romano or Mr. Smythe? Mr. Romano. I Mr. Romano. I mean, why in the world would you work off of a verbal about testing? It just doesn't even make sense. All right, I want to get to one other thing. Um, I'm very confused here with even why you were in on, you got your call on August 16th at 8 a.m. Why did we have somebody, we, wait, 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 let me finish. We had, all right, did you get, do you have another call that you got? What, what is your question, Ms. Cross? I'm, I'm not even sure. He said they got a call at 8 a.m. and they came on site on Monday the 19th. We had a contractor working there, there from RIS Construction. So why weren't you in there before RIS Construction was in there doing work? We were not aware of the project at that time. Why, why weren't you involved? Mr. Adonisio, why weren't they aware of the project at the time? Why did we have a contractor doing work that walked off the job that our architect didn't even know was happening? Because the, the scope of work that no, was no, no. proposed Maybe did, not, did not constitute the need for an architect you, at that time. Why are you, how do you know that? Because we were, at that time, we were just replacing the outside siding. But the, the we architect weren't, We weren't doing anything in. structural. I'm sorry, what was that? The architect hadn't been in to see what we actually needed, and you hired somebody without knowing what you needed and showing that it was 
not structurally sound. This doesn't even make any sense. No, we we went off the what the information Who that went was off? present. The board at the time. So I did, the, but the, you didn't have the right information. Well, we found out the right information after it was opened up. That that's the that's the part that maybe there's a little disconnect. So when the board there's was a big in, disconnect well, because you were ready to just fix the building, shove kids in there, and we could have had maybe some people get very sick and die. Well, no, that that's well, a big issue. We, we don't know that. That's speculating. So what we do know is this: we were told that some of the siding on the building was rotted. Told by who? By Mr. Romano during F and F meetings. Okay, so but he's not an architect or an engineer. But rot is rot. You can see the rot. We very common replace replace siding. So that that's what we were going to do. What was uncovered was more than we knew. I know, but you hired somebody. They started working. They walked off the job site. And then we hired an engineer to come in. Right. Wait, wait, wait. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. Why? Because the, the damage was more extensive than previously thought. Or no, nobody has x-ray vision. We don't go up to the building with an x-ray That's why you machine. hire an engineer to come in. That's why we pay the engineer. But how do we, but what is the engineer going to do? He, he still wouldn't know. You would still have to tear apart the walls. And, th and that's what we did. And then when we found out that and there was additional rot, what, that's what, why the, they came okay. in. Okay. Why don't we have RIS Construction sitting here telling us what was wrong? Because that's the missing link here. Mr. Or Mr. Adonisio, can you tell me which co-op RIS Corporation is part of? I don't know that, Mr. Smythe. Do you know that offhand? Can you look it up? Can you tell me which one? We don't have anything to look that up right now. You know, oh, yeah, they're off of Ed Data. They're off of what? Ed Data. What's Ed Data? Ed that, Data is just state co-op. It's a co-op. It's one of is the newer ones. Is it the educational? There's, there's various What's co it called? Is it called the it's educational? It's called Ed, Ed Data. E-D-D-A-T-A. -A. And they're a member of that? Yes, they are. And is um, HTHI a member of that co-op? No, they're not. So in the July 1st minutes, you mentioned that the contractor was charging 38000 They were part of a co-op. You also said on August 5th, when you had the new contractor, that they were part of a co-op. Did, did somebody just write down they were part of a co-op when they weren't? And to mislead the public? No. They Risk construction was part of a co-op. Um, HTHI is not. But in your minutes, you wrote that H that the contractor was a co-op vendor. Which no. contractor are you referring to? I'm I'm talking about your minutes. That, you said on August right. 5th that it was a co-op vendor, and I have a copy here if you want to see right. it. Right. So w when we had our F and F meeting, there was talk of we were hiring a co-op vendor, and that and that's what we did. At the point of those minutes, I was not aware that there was going to be a new contractor that was not a co-op vendor. So that Don't contractor... Don't you think that's odd that you weren't aware that they switched companies, you didn't know what the problems were, and you thought you were hiring a co-op vendor? Well, with regard to the project report that was in FNF, the contractor that was uh, retained in part of the July minutes was RIS. They were a co-op vendor. Uh, for the next meeting, it was still anticipated to be awarding the contract to a vendor that was on a co-op. However, when we did finally go out for multiple quotes and obtain a quote and have a contractor who could commit to getting the work done prior to the start of school, which was HTAI, it was after the August 5th Finance and Facilities Committee meeting, and it, they were not a co-op vendor. So you know, it wasn't a commitment that we were hiring a co-op. It would have been beneficial because it's more difficult to hire off of quotes because you have to get multiple quotes a co-op vendor would have been um, easier or, 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 or faster more expeditious uh, and that's what we were trying to get done plus the RIS was approved or was being awarded based on a co-op so we anticipated it however in order to get a contract that I could get the work done and within the price range we ended up quoting it and the Ultimately, it was awarded as a quote. Wait, on July 26th, 
Mr. Romano's office drafted a bill for $33,550 to HDHI. That was July 26th. How did you not know who they were on August 5th? Do you want to see a copy of it? I have it right here. Yeah, I don't know that to be accurate. So. This is also your purchase order. Uh, this is what I want to know, too. Why didn't Partner come in? You were, your invoice is dated July 31st. Why did it take 20 days for you to come in and do a test? 20 days. Just as clarification, HTI's proposal was dated August 6th. Well, the date that you may be referring to on a purchase order is a system date. So if they have not closed out the month prior, that may not be given the exact date that the requisition or the purchase order was issued if it was from a prior month. So I can't speak, know it's what July, you're speaking it's to. It's July 26th. HTI's proposal was 8-6. August 6th. August 6th. So, I mean, what, what you I, were telling us last month, I mean, just last week, you were saying you had a co-op vendor when you really did not have a co-op vendor and you got somebody else to fit your numbers, is what you're saying? No, and that's not what I said last week. So. Well, you said something about the numbers, because if it was over 40000 you'd have to go out for proper bids and people would have to be there and watch you open them. But your numbers came in at under so you didn't have to get proper bids here is this here it is here can you read the date and can you read what it says mr smythe you need my glasses Ms. Cross, do you do you have questions of? Right. All right. Please, no calling out. Please. So, Ralph, can you please. read the date of that and read the amount? I'd like to know how that got printed off. I don't know what this is. Can we print? Yeah. Okay. Further. It's a purchase order. It's made out to HTHI Construction. What's the date? The date on the purchase order says July 26, 2019. PO number is 200755. So how did you not know? How did you get the number on August 6th if you had that up there? Did you just put the number in and then tell them what to, to bid? I don't know. That, that's confusing to me. All right, Ms. Cross, this is questioning for a different time. I what, think it's questioning for this time well, because there's no. a lot of irregularities here and we need to get to the bottom of it and I think you should hire an outside independent investigator because you got a lot of problems here. We might, we might not, but the board will do its due if diligence in finding answers. Then I'm going to think that there's people on the board that are involved. How could you not okay. after what we just heard from the people sitting here? Mr. Romano, do you know when you recall when you received the quote from HTHI? They started work on, they were supposed to start work on 814. They started on 816, to my knowledge. Yeah, HTHI didn't quote until um, mid August, exact date, I don't know. Okay. So, so, how do you have a purchase order for the amount? Did because you just tell them that was the amount? It's a system date in the system. No, the, read it, the amount of the, of the price. 30? Read, read it, Mr. Smythe, right. so we have it Ms. on the Cross, record. Ms. Cross, we, we can't badger people. I'm not badgering. I'm asking well, to read his own document. So He right, gave this okay. to me. Let, but right? let me, let me back up for a second. The date of the purchase order, if it's from the prior month, if July has not been closed out, it could be August 10th. The purchase order may still reflect July. I mean, I can't speak specific to this purchase order, but if you would like that, responded to I will provide the reason why the date says 726 but the quote was received in August the contractor was on site in what, do you August. Th what do you think the date was August what August 
Do you have a copy Six. of the bid in front of you? I don't have the exact date. But do you have the um, bid with you date. right here tonight? Right. You can tell us what it is. Right. Ms. Cross, right now, the purpose of this meeting is to ask questions of our independent professionals that were hired. So do, do you have any questions on the air quality or the structural aspect of the trailers? That, that's what's appropriate right now. The additional information that you're asking, we will have a form for that if necessary and get answers because the one thing all of us here are committed to is making this so transparent that you're sick of talking about it. And, and, and that's what's going to happen. But right now, I think the these, only please. way to make it completely transparent is to have an outside investigator look at it because right now this okay. is not good at all. Okay. Can Thank I have you. those documents back so I have them? Mm -hmm. One last thing. It says here that this copy was printed on August 12th. So I think it's very important to know the date that you actually got the bid because this says the cost for the price is $33,550. And when I spoke to the owner of HTI, remember I was there, I said, oh, you quoted 33550 And he goes, oh, it's going to be more than that. So well, why, if it was going to be more than that, why didn't we have it in writing? Well, we don't, we don't, none of us were there. So as at this point, it would be considered hearsay. So do you have any questions for these two professionals, three professionals? I'm sorry. I think that's all I have for now. I may come back up again, but that's what I have for now. I'd like an independent investigation. Thank you. Hello, uh, Gail Marr. Wall resident, uh, president of the WTEA. We asked the NJEA to help us out and understand the report. Um, they contracted with New Jersey Work Environmental Council, reviewed the report, and then gave us a report back that we could understand. So if I can, I'd like to read it. Gail, at your request, I have reviewed the document from Partners Engineering and Science, Inc., entitled Bio aerosol sampling, Wall Central Elementary School, dated August 22, 2019. Please note that the NJ WEC memorandum is limited to review of the partner's document only. WEC has not visited Wall Central Elementary, nor, it is, nor has it conducted independent environmental samplings or assessment at the site. Consequently, this WEC review is not intended to be, nor should it be considered a comprehensive health and safety assessment. Partners' visual assessment of the Wall Central Elementary School partner, uh, portable trailers found the exterior of the units to be in disrepair, with damaged exposed wood supports and damaged exterior siding. Partners did not find visual evidence of water in, intrusion, although a slight musty odor was present. Partners did not utilize a water moisture meter in its assessment and therefore did not determine whether the moisture content of the building material and furnishings was elevated. Partners collected one sample in each of the four portable classrooms and two outside samples on the exterior for comparison purposes. Although the meaning of the trailer exterior is not clear, WEC assumes that these samples of outdoor air obtained adjacent to the portable trailers. Sample results. Uh, TCU Trailer 1, total fungal structure concentration was higher indoors than outdoors. TCU 3, although indoor total fungal structure concentration was slightly lower than outdoor concentrations, the presence of a lower concentration of, I can't say it, uh, K, it's, thank you, sir, um, and straco blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, was notable in, in that none was ind independent of outdoor samples, which is this, what the gentleman said. Partners concluded that the results of the bioaerosol sampling event indicated that the potential for the presence of a hidden indoor fungal amplification source and moisture intrusion in TC1 and 3. Partners recommended that leaks be identified and resolved, rotted wood supports and siding be replaced and remediated. Additional inspections be conducted 
uh, of spaces in the trailers, the operation and co condition of the HVAC system be assessed. WEC would concur with these recommendations only if there is no alternative to reoccupy these portable classrooms. As EPA has noted, portable or relocatable classrooms have been a feature of many school districts for years. From a district's perspective, the two advantages of portable classrooms are low initial cost and short time between specification and occupancy. They are intended to provide flexibility to school districts, enabling quick response to demographic changes and providing the ability to move from one school to another as demographics change. EPA has also identified common environmental and occupational health issues associated with the use of portable trailers. These include poorly functioning HVAC systems that provide minimal ventilation with outdoor air, poor acoustics from loud ventilation systems, chemical off-gassing from pressed wood and other high emission materials, which may be of greater concern because of rapid occupancy after construction, water entry and mold growth, site pollution from nearby parking lots or loading areas. EPA has also noted that portable classrooms vary in quality. The agency recommends caution during specification and selection to ensure that the student's health is not compromised for inexpensive, low quality design. The California Department of Health Services has issued an advisory on portable classrooms providing guidance and specifications for design, operation, and commissioning. WEC does not recommend the use of portable classrooms except in situations that they are necessary to replace damaged or otherwise non-occupiable classrooms in other school facilities. In such situations, use of portable classrooms should occur only on a short-term, time-limited basis, depending upon scheduled renovation, remediation, or construction of proper habitable quarters. Um, so, I mean, their recommendation, you know, explains the same findings, um, but their recommendation is it should never be used as long as it has. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, four, to be exact. Um, were uh, the windows, um, I understand there was a door opened. I was just also wondering while the testing occurred and prior to it, was there windows and doors open for any extended period of time? I don't know who would know that answer. Um, and I do understand that something, I'm not sure if it was a foot or a desk or a leg of something, had gone through the trailer floor this year um, and was repaired with some kind of a metal um, repair. And shouldn't that have been the first sign that there was a problem with the floor? Um, and I'm wondering, we, um, the gentleman said about the desk being cleaned outside of the trailers. I don't think that happened. I think they were cleaned inside the trailers. And then um, the issue about the paper um, that the teachers got uh, last Friday, I think, um, that they were not going to be able to use any of that paper and that they were going to be replacing everything. Who made that decision? Thank you. Do we, Mr. Romano, is it confirmed that all cleaning was done outside of the trailers? Were, were you on site to witness this or was there a supervisor? Can you explain that? No, I was not on site. The custodial supervisor uh, was on site. Um, it is my understanding that the desks, the furniture was cleaned outside of the trailers. Um, but I can ver verify that for you. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Meyer, uh, what was the, the last question you just asked? Uh, the, um, the paper? Who, um, if, oh. if it seems that the paper is okay to be used, why were the teachers told that they wouldn't be able to gather any of that and reuse? But my understanding is none of the paper is going to be reused, correct? To be for, as a precaution we, but was that a recommendation from partners that the paper should not be reused used maybe you can answer 
to be overly cautious, we've, we've said that we should either sample cellulose-based materials or dispose of it. I am okay with either one. That is a board decision, not mine. Because I think the teachers would be a lot more comfortable knowing that it was precautionary than hearing the message you can't use any of it because that adds to their stress level. Yes, well, that, and again, that was the purpose of this meeting tonight, to hear the reports, to, to understand what it is, and if, you know, if there's something someone doesn't understand, we're going to make sure they understand it before they leave. So, again, that, that goes to the question of the books, that you could sample it or you could just throw it out. I'm of the mindset just throw it out because why are we going to waste mm -hmm. money on uh, books that could be a couple years old anyway and we're going to get something new. So uh, we'll always err on the side of caution. I mean, again, too, my, my concern is the teacher's personal uh, things in the classroom, pictures and things of that nature. I want to make sure that, one, they are it's safe and, two, precautionary to really wipe them down. So, so from what I understand, that would be acceptable. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Christine Opegaard. I work at Central. Next week, I'll start my 29th year as a teacher in Wall Township. Thank you. Last week, I was appointed as the chairperson of the newly formed Health and Safety Committee for the WTEA. It's important for you to know that I also served on a board of education in my local district for 21 years and six months. <laughs> that being said, we are looking forward to working with the Board of Education, the administration, and parents as a committee to ensure that all students, staff, and teachers have a healthy and safe environment to learn in and work in. At this time, we're in the process of gathering representatives from all of the buildings in the district we have another meeting planned for mid-September. Mr. Adnizio, I'm requesting that the operations manager and at least one board member serve on this very important committee with us. We promise to work in good faith to chip away at years of many, many health and safety concerns. We understand that things will not be fixed overnight, but problems have been let go for far too long. The vision of this committee is one of mutual cooperation and not animosity. The health and safety of all members of our staff and our children must be your priority. You can no longer turn a blind eye, cut corners, or cover up problems in our buildings. We must work together to prioritize problems and find mutually agreed upon solutions. I look forward to hearing from you and working together for our school community. Please feel free to contact me directly with any questions or concerns. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can give you an answer right now that you will absolutely have the full cooperation of this board because we take these things very seriously and uh, we as a group and, and having conversations over the last several days, uh, it's our goal to move this district in directions and, and achieve things that we've never done before. And certainly something like this being brand new, um, we certainly want to be part of that and, you know, hear from the staff what they think might be issues that we can identify and, and fix. And uh, it's definitely going to be a learning experience for everybody involved. So thank you. Thank you. And as you know, this is not a central school problem. This is a district problem. All of our buildings have concerns. Every, every and I'm sure we know. Mr. Romano knows that too. Every building is getting old, and that's why we are doing the studies we're doing now. Because, again, and I've mentioned it many times before, we have boilers that are 50, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just replaced two at Old Mill School. So we have infrastructure that is getting older. We have constraints of budgetary uh, things that, that make it very difficult. And we as a district are going to, what we need to do is look at new innovative ways to fix these problems. And, and maybe we have to spend some money on some things that in the long run will save us money. But that's what we're committed to doing. And, and we are going to do it. And we're starting. I appreciate that. Thank you. Ralph, could they um, elaborate on custodial work orders? Like how, um, if there's an issue or a safety concern for the district, what, how do teachers or um, faculty members go about reporting it just so we're aware? Mr. Romano, Mr. Wright, 
Can you talk about that? Yeah, a, a, any deficiencies in the buildings are uh, reported to the custodial supervisor. Uh, custodial supervisor will then submit a work order through our school dude uh, work order based system. Um, that work order is sent to me as well as the operations supervisor and um, we assign those to the appropriate uh, maintenance technicians. Um, in terms of uh, air quality concerns, um, we do have a form that um, a teacher would fill out um, to note whatever concern he or she has and we take that and um, you know we we put that as, as a high priority with, with all you just said it does sound like a long process so typically I'm a teacher something's wrong I report it to the, the, the custodial supervisor how long does this whole process take until f boots are on the ground and something's being done well, it depends on what it is. Obviously, there's high priority items, there's low priority items. Um, you know, a high priority item is going to get addressed as soon as possible. Um, that can be the day of. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, my answer to that question is it depends on exactly what um, the work order is in reference to. If it's a safety concern, it's, it's going to be addressed um, ideally within uh, uh, the day, you know, as soon as possible. So. Okay. Just a suggestion Thank moving you. forward. Maybe the school dude reports can go to F and F committees, so then we can oversee what's going on. Is that something you could provide us? Yeah, we we can print out reports. That's okay. has okay. the capability of doing that. All right. Maybe something as simple as uh, when it was reported, when, what it was, and when it was rectified. Sure. Similar to the the facility update, so we get. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Melissa Coppola, live here in Wall, have two children in the district. I also own an indoor air quality firm, Greenworks Environmental. Sorry. Um, I own an indoor air quality firm, Greenworks Environmental. We're not an engineering firm. We specifically deal with mold. Um, I have a few questions about the report. I see, Mr. Romano, that you contacted Mr. Nemitz on August 18th to come out and do sampling, correct? And when did, uh, was it HTHI start work on the trailers? What date was that? The exact date, I, I think it was the 16th. Um, but I could, I could, you know, that, that could be off. Okay. I can, the exact date, I don't know. Sure. What prompted you to reach out to Mr. Nemitz? The, obviously the concern that, you know, we were going to start renovation and, and there's been some water damage. Um, so that was... What Wouldn't it. you have wanted to do that before they started work on the trailers? To find uh, out what our base level was before we started moving things around and disturbing areas? Not necessarily. Not how I would operate. Okay. Um, so on August 19th, Mr. Rizzo and Mr. Bracey came out and did the visual investigation and sampling, correct? And are they here tonight? No, they're not. So we can't have a lot of our questions answered because they can't be here to answer questions as of doors that were open, windows that were open, correct? They are not present. Okay. Um, that obviously leaves some questions open. Um, when I know there was at least one door open, I think I saw some pictures of some other windows open. There's HEPA vacuums going. Um, when we look at the mold samples, that were taken here. Where were the exterior samples taken? Uh, off the top of my head, I do not know the exact location, but they were at, at the exterior of the buildings. Generally, we try to take them by fresh air intake. Of course, not a full-blown HVAC system. It's a little harder to do, but somewhere around the exterior of the building. Do we know how far? No, I do not know that off the top of my head. Generally, within reach of an electrical cord, and we're between 25 to 50 feet away. Okay, simply because, you know, we have doors open, we have vacuums going, as you mentioned, we're moving a lot of things around in the air. There's a very good chance that the exterior samples could be skewed because we could be blowing around things in the air that were in the buildings at that point. I would, I would suggest that the wind is going to be stronger than a HEPA vacuum. Do you know what the wind speed was that day? Uh, no, but generally speaking, it's stronger than a HEPA vacuum, yes. Were you there that day? I was not there that day. Okay, then that answers a question right there. Um... So when we look at the samples, definitely there is one trailer that is worse than the rest, but they all, they all have different elevated levels. 
So we're talking about uh, chitomium Whoa. and stachybotrys. You're in, you're in trailer number three. Trailer three, correct. Sample number four. Correct. Um, we're kind of glossing over the fact that these are present in these levels or in any level as far as I'm concerned. Um, you definitely mentioned that chitomium and stachybotrys are indi indicative of water damage building materials. Correct. Absolutely. Um, those things don't happen overnight. You know, when you talked about as the wind goes, so does the mold. There are definitely things, cladosporium and some of these other ones could come in and out with, and they're found on anything. They're found on leaves that are rotting outside. I mean, that certainly could be the case. Chitomium and stachybotrys, if anyone can Google them online, there's eight-year-olds in here with a phone that could Google it, um, are what people call toxic black mold, generally. And they have serious human health concerns. They're usually not found in the air because they're very big spores. And they don't float around, they like to settle. They settle on things. So they show a historic amount of damage. Uh, that we're finding them in the air shows a huge concern because they're getting out of whatever they're settled into and they're getting tossed into the air. Um, I would not want to see any of these ever in any area that I ever sampled. Um, if we look at human health concerns related to stachybotrys and chitomium, they run the gamut. And when we talk about who is most susceptible to health effects, we talk about seniors, we talk about the immunocompromised, and we talk about children. Um, the molds themselves, stachybotrys and chitomium, I want to try to break it down a little because someone actually said to me earlier, I don't understand what this report means. This isn't in English, my language. Understandable. Um, do you, they, do the you have a, que a question? I do have a okay. question. My question, okay, so let's get to it. Um, chitomium and stachybotrys are here. They have serious health effects. They're in the air. Why was no surface sampling done? Why would I surface sample? There's no reason. If we know it's there, what's the point of surface sampling? Um, because we have buildings that have been buttoned up for months that no one has used. The air has not been disturbed. We know, looking at the exterior of the buildings, we know there's serious water damage. We know water damage leads to microbial growth. Why would we not want to see what's been going on inside the building on the surface? Because we are already aware that they're going to do significant renovations in the building. So to take more samples to prove something that's there now, that's not going to be there in a week, a month, whatever the case may be, wouldn't really matter. Are they going to be renovating and remediating the areas that, we, that you sample? How do we even know if we're hitting all the areas we need to if we don't know what our baseline is? Uh, if you recall in my report that you've so fondly brought up, yes, I we, we actually said additional investigation activities are required. So, and by the way, the, the school, I, I forget the TWIC, also agreed with me on that. So that's why we're doing it that way. I forget the name of it. I apologize. WEC. WEC. Their environmental consultant also peer reviewed. She, she brought that up before. So the investigation was done, which was a visual investigation only. We did not do any uh, moisture meter readings to find out any source and any kind of water damage that might be occurring. Uh, specifically says here, correct, that the source of the moisture intrusion was not identified. Correct? Correct. That's not what our purpose was. We were there to see if there are any mold spores to, because we knew they were going to do a bunch of renovations to make sure that whoever's doing it would be safe, to make, make sure that they weren't going to be exposed to anything. I mean, that's, that's understandable. This is... You make sure that anybody isn't going to be exposed to anything. Mr. Romano just said they were in a hurry to get people into the building. I mean, what I'm seeing here is, upon completion of this report, you're calling for more investigation. Investigation yes. upon investigation. Why didn't we just do all the investigation once and make sure we had everything that we needed to know about what's going on in these trailers before we what? jump into remediating and then saying, oh, we got to go back in and do more investigation again? Because that was not, our, was not our scope of work. Our scope of work was to come out there, take some air samples, do an initial investigation, and that's what we did. That is you, it. as a colleague, I'm sure you do stuff like this all the time. This is what the industry does. We go out there, we do a quick set of air samples, do a quick and visual investigation, say, okay, we have a problem. We issue our report and say, we need a full-blown investigation. I am not about to cut into walls of a trailer that they may or may not be having people in without having any proper PPE for myself 
any proper engineering controls for anybody else who may go in there. I do not want to put anybody at risk. So we didn't do it that way. I don't want to put anybody at risk. Sure, I understand that. Well, then why, why did are you your investigators me? go out without proper PPE? I would never send anyone out on a we job have without PP proper PPE. We have PPE. Well, but no one it, else should have even been in the building. The building should have been under containment if you thought you had that much of an issue that you were no, doing. No, that's frankly. not the case at all. We go out there, you don't know what you're walking into. So you do this for a living too. I when, do. When you get a phone call, do you know exactly what you're walking into every time? No, and I make sure that I'm totally prepared. And exactly. I also we don't do PPE. any quick investigations. That's what we were there to do. Well, then that's an issue for the board. Maybe you want to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, Karen McCarrick, Brindley Road Wall. Um, I just want to clarify to make sure... I didn't misunderstand. So the trailers will not be used for students this year? Correct. Even other instructional Correct. purposes? Correct. Okay. No students okay. at all inside those trailers. Okay. And I cannot thank you enough. Um, my son has been getting allergy shots on a weekly basis for 18 months. One of those shots is because of mold. So to prove a point that... Um, Yes, there are a lot of children, student staff that um, must suffer like he does. So thank you for that. Um, my next concern then, I know it sounds silly, but again, mold, are the desks coming from these trailers. Forgive me, I haven't had a son in, in the trailers in a few years. So number one, classroom one and three had uh, elevated numbers, correct? Are they connected or are they... Because I, if I remember correctly, two classrooms are in the same trailer, and then two are on the other side. Yes, one and two. One and two, three and four. No. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So one has elevated, three has elevated. That does it, and they're connected to two and four. I'm a little concerned that it, it, it kind of travels or are those those desks are already been removed they they have been and as mr romano uh, stated they were clean per industry standards okay um still a little concerned because again they are in there but i'll have to take your word the, I, and just so you know right now the the two classrooms that did have the elevated numbers in them we were standing in them and they still have everything in them the one and three, correct? Correct, yes. But one is connected to number two. And the children, if I remember correctly, walk through the bathrooms and the hallway to switch and change. And they bring all their things from room one to room two because they switch mornings and afternoons. So um, that's, that's why I'm concerned about the mold. And now my son will be, and I thank you, board, very much. He will now be in the building, but he may be exposed to that, that desk. So but I, I, but the, the desks have been cleaned. So, okay. I mean, they were cleaned, as Mr. Romano said, before they went inside the building because that, that is a major concern because if it turned out they weren't, they would have been ripped out of the school by now because we, a bit, right after this happened, I sent an email um, saying that we, we got to make sure we don't cross-contaminate, and that was a major concern. So, and, and everybody's aware of that because when you're talking about air quality testing, even if nothing was found, they still would have cleaned the desks before they moved them inside. Okay, and they were definitely, we have a confirmation that they were cleaned before the building? I'm sorry, I don't know what, what exactly it is. You're before asking. going in the building, so that's the what you mean, correct? So the desk that were removed from the trailer three was cleaned before it got into central? The desks were not removed out of trailer three, out of classroom three. I'm sorry, two and four, I'm very sorry. They were cleaned before they went into central school, yes. Please don't yell out. They clean them in the building. In Central? Yes, in, in the classrooms that were not affected or did not have any yield, any high spore counts. Okay. So, if, if I recall, I told you I would get the answer to that question, and I did, and confirmed it. They were cleaned in the classrooms. In the, they were, so to be clear, please, 
they were cleaned inside the the trail the classroom in the trailer that didn't have the higher counts yes okay so they weren't they weren't actually removed from the trailers and cleaned outside and then brought into the school no okay so 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 at this point i think maybe i would re-examine the cleaning and maybe give everything uh another once over since stuff was moved from one location to another knowing that stuff is airborne and even though you know things move around you open closed doors air shifts uh i certainly understand the concerns there and mm -hmm. um that's that that's yeah yeah we'll do that we'll go over them again thank you you're welcome thank you. I'm Samantha Bassett. I live in Wall Township. Um, first, I would like to thank the Board of Ed for holding this meeting in public. I think that is um, important, and I thank you all for being here. Um, I just have a few questions that I'd like to go over. So the first contractor, um, I believe you said it was RIS, was hired to work on the trailers in July, and the district parted ways with them for whatever reason. Did this contractor tell anyone that there was structural damage to the trailers in July? And if not, what's the exact date that you learned that there might be structural damage? Mr. Romano, do you know the answer to that? Yeah, the first contractor um, did not want to continue work because there was um, a substantial amount of work to be done um, outside of his first um, scope of work that he proposed. A substantial amount of structural damage that he was concerned about? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry, I forget your name, I think it was Barbara. Um, you said that a full structural assessment had not been done before you got in and still has not been done. Why is that? We, we were called in um, after the, I believe the second contractor had removed the, um, the skirting around and the, the deteriorated wood was, um, was seen. So I guess I can, um, Mr. Adonisio, ask you, Yes. why hasn't a full structural assessment been done prior to all of this? Well, based on what I'm hearing now, that mm -hmm. could raise some flags that we might have to address. Um, I agree. Because, well, one, yes, the students aren't going back in there, but if we're going to put money into these and possibly have offices there, that is something we're going to have to examine to make sure, one, it's safe for staff because that, that you know, whether it's children or staff or, or you know, everybody's equally important. Um, <laughs> sorry. It, it, well, Go ahead. I think also, you know, we have the architects here, but at the time we called in, we had the structural engineer come out and take a look, and maybe without committing to doing an ent entire structural analysis or structural evaluation uh, on both trailers is to have the engineer's opinion is whether one is warranted. Um, because when RIS started the work, they uh, opened up one small section of the uh, trailer, the one that's front and center facing the playground. They removed the siding. Uh, it was determined that the rim joist was damaged. Uh, re uh, asked them for an additional proposal or a new proposal to incorporate the work that may be necessary because it was still unknown at that time. Um, they returned to work. They removed the rim joist and saw that there was the ends of the floor joist in that one location. However, at that time, there was uh, small pieces of the siding removed around the trailers, it was limited in scope, but what was found was that the, the other areas on the far trailer, the studs were in good shape. There was not significant damage. So it wasn't as though uh, there was significant damage that was identified throughout um, the perimeter of all the trailers. The new contractor came in, the work was continued, got more involved, and that was the opportunity to remove all the siding along the perimeter so that the extent of the damage could be identified so that the engineer could evaluate it. They walked the trailers, they reviewed them. At no time was there a, 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 even a suggestion that an entire structural analysis was necessary for the trailers. But uh, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be doing it, but perhaps it would be more prudent to ask their opinion whether one is necessary based on their visual observations because um, 
one of the considerations with regard to the floor framing, you know, anything that's localized where, you know, with regard to where a teacher put her foot through the floor, to right. the extent of that we don't know, but I know that it was repaired. Um, you know, there was water damage from around the windows or, or by the outside door that uh, deteriorated the plywood that's being addressed or that would be removed and replaced at that time when that's exposed if there was damage to the structural member underneath that would be addressed at that time and repaired as opposed to i think it would be difficult for the engineer i don't want to speak for him to be able to do an entire structural analysis on all the uh, framing because it's not accessible it's not accessible from underneath because there's a metal pan that encloses both trailers underneath so it's not like you can go into underneath the trailers and look up at the floor framing and inspect it. Um, there's small openings where there's utilities that penetrate the flooring where the framing can be observed and what has been observed seem to be in, in good condition. Um, so to be able to like say a full analysis, you would be cutting the floors up, cutting the pan up underneath. And you know, I, I don't know that that would be prudent or necessary, but I would ask the engineer for that opinion um, or if you want to comment further. Right. I mean, at the time that we were called in, we didn't feel that a full structural analysis was warranted. I mean, the, the building, again, we, um, based on what we saw and what was visible, and um, our structural engineer was out with us, um, the repairs were sufficient to make the building uh, usable. Um, we didn't see a need for a, um, a full structural analysis, and, and that is something that can be called destructive testing because you do have to cut more openings, and we did not feel, based on what we saw, that that was warranted. Okay, thank you. Um, you knew on or before August 15th, the day that Alliance Commercial Pest Control was at the trailers, that there was an infestation issue and that pesticides were being applied. If um, parents should know what's happening in the district, as Ms. Dyer, you indicated in your email from the 20th, why didn't anyone disclose the infestation issue to the parents in any of the subsequent emails regarding the trailers, whether to just the fifth grade parents or to the entire district? Anyone? Mr. Schmeich, do you have that answer? Ms. Dyer? I don't have an answer to that question at this time. Okay. Um, the Board of Education, as we know, voted unanimously on the 20th to stop work on the trailers except to secure the site while they were exploring other options. Um, district employees, I, I think you, I believe you said, custodians were moving desks and trailers out on the 21st. Um, were these district employees wearing any kind of protective gear and clothing? Were they told about um, partner engineering sampling reports and the results? Um, you said they cleaned the desks inside the trailers and then moved them into the building, and we obviously just discussed the issues involved in that. Um, was anyone supervising the cleaning um, you know, higher up at all? Um, could you speak Mr. to that? Mr. Yeah, supervising the cleaning was done by the supervisor, the custodial supervisor in the building. Um, the uh, custodians did not wear any PPE. They were in, again, in the rooms that were um, found to be of acceptable levels, okay. rooms uh, two and four. Were they aware of the results for trailers one and three before they kind of moved into no, the holes? No, they were not. They were not. Okay, thank you. Um, so, I, I'm sorry. That's okay. But... <laughs> So th this is something that I've been wondering. Why did we allow employees go into the, the buildings before we had the results? No, we had the results. We did? Yes. Okay. I had the results. The, the, the verbal results. And, and with, when you, correct, you didn't have the, the written report. You had the verbal. From yes, him. I had okay. a verbal from Brian. And, and he told you exactly which ones were the problems? Yes. Okay. All right. What if you wrote it down? I'm sorry. You, you can continue. Um, thank you. So um, Partner Engineering came out and took the samples on August 19th. Do you know the exact time that your employees came out and took the samples? On the chain of custody, uh, it looks like the first sample was at 11.31. The last sample was at 12 o'clock. Thank you. Um, does anyone know or can speak to how long the trailer do doors were open before partner engineering came 
we, news 12 we don't, well, you we don't, don't know no that. one knows that no does anyone know who opened the doors in the morning and at what time that could have occurred no not to my knowledge that that, that was actually a question i asked earlier and it was unknown how long they were open for which exactly which doors um so unfortunately we don't have answers to that okay because um news 12 was on site that morning and by the time they got there the doors were had been wide open before they were there so i would say several hours that the doors were wide open um i guess a person can't speak to this because we don't know who did it but if you're having a company come out to do air sample testing and you're paying them to do that why are you airing out the trailers before that 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 was a question i had asked and could you just touch upon that again um what your answer was to that he did, he did. I don't, I don't understand what you're asking. It, I asked the question earlier about the, uh, the doors being open and airing out the trailers. Would that have an effect on uh, what the results were? Yes, there's a potential for that. Okay. A very likely potential, correct? I wouldn't say very likely. Okay. okay. It, um, it depends on the airflow and which way it's coming and if the interior doors are open or just the exterior doors, which we don't know the answer to. Okay. Oh, you said earlier that it would make it worse. Is that correct? Potentially. Potentially. If you, but it no. could make it better? No. The cleaning, he said, would make it worse, well, not the, the doors the, being the, open. Um, if a strong wind came in for a sec, okay. I wasn't there, I can't. If a strong wind came in and the cleaning, it would kick up spores that are in there and make it more likely to be caught in an air sample. What was the comparison report? I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I just think that, you know, regardless of what the intent was, if you step back, it looks really bad that you're airing out the trailers for hours, that you have employees in them before the testing is even done, you know, cleaning, moving things around, doing that. It, it, you know, if you were paying to have testing done, then you should leave the testing conditions the way that they, that the, the way that they are. That's my personal opinion on that. Um, partner engineering conduct conducted air samples inside Central School in February of 2017. Mold spores were present in high numbers in several classrooms and retesting was done on several dates. To your knowledge, have these classrooms been retested recently? Is there any kind of regular mold testing inside the school? No, they have not been done. They have not? No. Have the resource rooms across? Just a, I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Just follow up. So when, when those numbers were found, they were retested after that to find if they were satisfactory or not? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Just. And just for clarification, the reason they were tested was because there was um, a recent capital project that was done that re-roofed the, the, the building. The chimney was taken down. The chimney that was no longer in use was taken down and cut off. Uh, within the attic space uh, because of the condition of it. However, there was a vent pipe for the steam system that was venting through the chimney and venting into the attic. So there was a considerable amount of condensation and mold that built up in the attic space of Central School. That was a remediation project. As part of that remediation project, the classrooms on the second floor, uh, and I believe also in the, ending up testing on the first floor, mm -hmm. were tested as a result of that situation um, you know and then there was remediation done and then they were retested so it wouldn't it was not we just tested classrooms or like the earlier question do we just do routine testing the answer is no it would only be in response to uh, an occurrence uh, where mold was identified or a situation that warranted the testing right and um, I don't know if you are aware or who would be aware but the resource rooms in Central School across from the library have leaky ceiling issues and constant water issues. The technology room has condensation rooms every time the air conditioner is turned on. Um, have any of these rooms been tested for mold? Have the carpet and other surfaces in those rooms been tested? Um, I feel that every teacher should be able to report issues that affect the health and safety of students and themselves in their classrooms without fear of retaliation. And I worry that that's not the way that the teachers feel. And that's something that you should look into in your procedures of the way that they report things and the way that these things are tested. Um, Mr. Sullivan, you've made health and safety one of your priorities um, as a board member. And so far, you've been good to your word on that. 
I'll ask you once again to put the safety of the children and the teachers first and get some mold testing and surface testing done inside the school. If the trailers were allowed to get into a state of disrepair like this, I really have to question the way the interior of the school looks and is maintained. There are far too many students in our school with asthma, allergies, autoimmune diseases, and other serious medical, condi medical conditions to take any chances with this. I believe that the Board of Ed wants to restore the public's trust. I think that as difficult as this situation is, it's provided you with an opportunity to do so, and I hope that you take advantage of that opportunity. Um, Gail Windsor, retired Wall Township teacher. I retired from the Township Board of Education in 2014 after 31 years of teaching at Wall High School and Allenwood School, and I am going to refer to my notes because I don't want to overlook anything. It took me a long time to think about this. It took me a long time to get the nerve to stand up here, but I kept my mouth shut for so many years and have a lot of guilt for the kids that went through my classroom. On that note, I was also a resident of Wall Township from birth until four years ago. After what has transpired with the trailers, I am here tonight out of concern for the staff and students of Wall Township schools based on my own personal experience. The majority of my years were spent working in Allenwood School. During my time there, I suffered constantly with upper respiratory and sinus infections, as did my son, who is now 39, and many of my coworkers. Uh, one who was in the hospital for six months with bronchitis, and now it, pictures are all starting to come together. Um, or uh, pneumonia, not bronchitis, okay. Um, I was on antibiotics, nasal spray, and allergy medication more than I should have been as soon as I began working in the building. Consequently, I sought the help of an allergist. After testing positive to mold, I spent a few years completing all of the required shots, rushing to get to work on time, with good results. I was no longer positive. My mold allergies supposedly had gone away. Unfortunately, my problems did not stop. And I'm sharing this because none of you are aware of this. You weren't sitting out here. The only one that would probably be aware is Mr. Smythe. I believe he was in his position at the time. I do not remember the exact year my major issues started. I believe it was in the winter of 2007 at Allenwood. I began running fevers every day and feeling lousy. During the summer, I was fine. Once I came back to school in September of 2007, it started again. Fevers, headaches, cough, lethargy were a daily routine for me. Getting through the day was difficult. I went to numerous doctors who could find nothing wrong and went through many tests. Basically, I spent my entire year sick and not getting answers from medical professionals. I was sure there was mold in my classroom and approached my principal. It is my belief that he had the custodians check my room and then told me he knew the OSHA rules and my room was fine. From that point on, I made sure all correspondence to him was through email, and I did print copies, which are in my mold file, which is unfortunately in my house in Florida, because I didn't expect to be here tonight doing this. I was just looking through that file recently. Um, wait, let me find my place. Summer vacation came with nothing resolved other than me not sick while off from school. Returning to school in 2008 had me totally frustrated as the symptoms started again. I knew there had to be mold in my classroom, but couldn't get my principal to listen. I also know that I definitely I would, spoke to my custodial supervisor and spoke to the custodians, but it's not their fault. They can only do what they're directed to do. So they were aware. Uh, they had... Uh, finally, they had, and Mr. Smythe, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I think it was called PMK, supposedly come in and test and told me my room was fine. 
I never saw a copy of the report, and I guess I was naive and didn't ask for it. I was so desperate, it came to the point, I looked into the cost of having someone come do mold testing in my room at night, because I worked late many nights. I figured I'll bring somebody in, they won't know. And, but I knew that if I found out, my job would suffer ramifications. At one point, I had a friend look at the trim under my windows to verify it was mold. I made the custodians aware of my problem. Like me, their hands were tied. We all needed our jobs. So I continued to suffer in silence and see my allergist. He assured me I was no longer testing positive to mold, yet I was sick. I had more, you know, allergy tests for mold than I care to think about. Uh, my lucky break came when an Allenwood employee found mushrooms growing in the back of the sink cabinet in my classroom. When it was brought to my attention, I took pictures and immediately went to my allergist to get him on board. He wrote a letter which I presented to my principal along with pictures, the pictures that I took. My principal suggested moving me to one of the air-conditioned rooms. I resisted because I knew some of my students had to be affected by this too. Over the years, I know they did. And it explains why many of them were out sick so frequently and had the same problems that I had. And I told him that. I had already done research on how allergies negatively affect student learning. Look at samples. It's the difference in student performance when they're suffering and when they're not. My only regret is not taking samples and having them tested myself. I had them in a little metal pan and stupid me, I should have kept some of it and taken it and had it tested. The school solution to the problem, they took care of it. They had maintenance. Remove the sink, the cabinet, and part of the wall which they replaced, and they painted over the window trim. The removal was done while students were in the classroom. I was teaching language arts at the time. They were pulling everything down, pulling out the sink, pulling out the cabinet, and throwing it all out the window. Did they have protective gear? No. Did I? No. Did the kids? No. Did maintenance decide to just come in and do that on their own? Of course not. Someone else gave them that directive. And was I upset? Of course, because I couldn't open my mouth to parents. Well, how safe is that? Two weeks later, all of my symptoms stopped. The school nurse was aware and very concerned for my health. She said I needed to have my lungs x-rayed due to the possibility of complications from this later in life. In speaking to my principal after that, I said, I could have had a lawsuit here, but I need my job. And he agreed with me. I am not the only employee in Wall Township who has gone through this. I know of others who have suffered in the past due to mold, and I know some that still do, but they would never speak up. Some may be sick and not realize why. I was one of the lucky ones who got to the root of my problems. Now that I'm retired, I can speak the truth about this without being afraid. What about the poor employees who still can't because they are afraid? What about all the students who have been affected over the years through not only sickness, but an impact on learning? I feel I let many parents and students down because I had to keep quiet. I also know there are other teachers and staff that feel the same way. I know custodians have to feel that way. Nothing can be thrown off it. Oh, it's up to the custodial supervisor. It's up to the custodians. It's up to the people at the top to know how to handle this and pass it to your custodial supervisors. And I have to say tonight, I've been, I follow the board meetings all the time. I watch them. I, I'm in Florida most of the year, but I watch them faithfully. And I have to commend all of you who are sitting here tonight because I really get the feeling that you guys want transparency and you want to get to the bottom of problems that have gone on far too long in this district. 
And I commend you for that, I really do. And I hope that you will work with the teachers and the staff as well, so they don't have to be afraid. It really brings morale down. It really does. I've seen it. I've seen what it did to me. I've seen what it has done to my coworkers. And, and things really need to change. But anyway, after seeing the conditions of the trailers, I feel compelled to speak up and ask the board to do the right thing. Do thorough mold testing in all schools. You know, I had to be sick three of my school years and find, well, have an employee find the mushrooms for me before they would even listen to me. And when I got my doctor involved, they had no choice but to listen. How many kids suffered in that classroom? There is no way those trailers got into that condition without someone knowing, yet a Band-Aid approach was taken. How many other Band-Aids have been put on things that the public doesn't know about? How many custodians, teachers, and staff have been and still are frustrated because they know of situations but don't dare speak up, especially to the public? If they do speak up to superiors, they know they have to follow the directives of those superiors if they want to keep their job. I may be retired, but I always will be a wall girl concerned for wall schools. You know, I'm invested in this district. As Chris, you went through wall schools with my son. When you've lived here your whole life, and you went through all the schools, and you've taught for years, I wasn't here for a paycheck. I was here because I love the schools, I love the kids. And I used to feel like I was working for a, my hometown, and it's not like that anymore. Something really needs to change. That is why I am here tonight. Um, I am concerned for the safety of every student and everyone working in the buildings and wall. Now that obvious problems have been brought to the public's attention, do the right thing. Stop putting on Band-Aids to cover serious issues. Not just with mold, but anything. And you do need accountability. When, you know, okay, I write a note on a piece of paper and I leave it on the desk of the head custodian. That's how we did it. I didn't file any formal reports. You need that paper trail. And you people sitting on the board should be entitled to see. Because let me tell you what, you can put in a work order, and it can take a couple years before anything's ever done, if it's done. So really, I think the board needs to step up and oversee these things. Um, thank you, Superintendent Dyer, Mr. Smythe, and Board of Education members for listening to my long overdue talk and long overdue concerns for the students and the employees of Walt Township. Thank you. Thank you, and I can tell you, speaking on behalf of the board, we are fully committed to making sure the safety of students and staff is a priority, um, and we will be working with the Health and Safety uh, Committee of the WTEA to make sure um, no teacher or staff member anywhere in this district uh, is fearful for speaking up. Um, they absolutely shouldn't be. And if they are um, and something happens, we certainly want to hear about it because that's unacceptable. You know, people come here, you know, our teachers in our district and our employees are very passionate about what they do. 99.9% uh, .9 of all teachers don't do this because it's a paycheck. They do it because they love it. Um, most people probably think they're crazy for, for what they do. So we are deeply concerned by anything that could adve adversely affect any staff member, and we will certainly, um, as our newest member of the board brought up, we are going to be looking at these work orders, and nothing is going to take years. Um, we, we will be on top of this, and you know, to just again further uh, what, what I mentioned earlier, we are looking at a demographic study and doing a, a possible referendum uh, for some of the much needed things that have to be done. And as part of that, we anticipate. Um, one of the things suggested was opening our buildings up and doing tours so everybody can see the condition of every building, um, maybe places that nobody ever thought of because it's important. And we really need community support uh, 
if we want to do these improvements and, and make our school system the best it can be and take it to levels that it's never been before because we have the staff for it. We just have to kind of give it a little push in that direction. So thank you. How are you? My name's Scott Rowland. I have uh, two kids in the central school system. I'm not here to beat a dead horse because I think the, uh, the women behind me pretty much covered everything. It's tough to take a podium after uh, Betsy and real tough after Samantha. And I'm shooting from the hip. I don't have anything written down. I only have a couple questions. My first question is for, uh, your first name is? Brian. Brian, I'm Scott. Nice to meet you, Brian. My first question is for partner. <clears throat> I believe now, I read the whole report a couple times. I believe it was page six, section four, under recommendations. You recommended, I believe it was the third or fourth bullet down. I believe it was the third bullet down. You recommended further testing of the interior of the walls, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, what would the cost of the testing of the interior of the walls be in all four trailers, roughly? Just roughly. I, I, I don't know. Um, so the reason we didn't do it, and I was trying to say before, okay. when we cut into a wall, we don't know what's in there. Okay. So if we're going to do it, I got to, especially in an area like this where we know there's a concern already, okay. I'm going to want a contractor with me who can button that wall right back up when we're done yep. and be able to clean it off. So I couldn't say how much their contractor costs. Understandable. Right uh, generally speaking, from my end to go into, I mean, you're going in the, 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 I'm doing math in my head, forgive me. So you're looking at all four classrooms to cut in, you're looking in the, all four classrooms to cut into the walls. Mm -hmm. How many walls? All of them? All of them, yeah. Why two? I don't know. I'm yeah. asking you. You're, yeah. you're asking me for a price. I want to make sure I, I answer we, your we're question properly. About, we're talking about people, so we, let's yeah. be thorough, oh. right? I so let's cut into all of them. Just to make sure I'm on the Just same page. Just a rough estimate. It'd be in, the th in several thousand dollars. Several thousand dollars. Okay, so the money pit has just gotten deeper, right? The pit's getting deeper. Now, my next question is, you're both architects? Okay. Now, I believe it was two 4x8 sheets of T111 that were removed from the front trailer to expose the rotted rim joist and the floor joist, right? Roughly two 4x8 sheets. Uh, roughly, yes. Yeah, roughly. Okay, so not only were the rim joists rotted, the floor joists were all rotted behind two four by eight sheets. The sheets are put up on the four foot side, on the eight foot side. Okay, so you have sixteen feet exposed, hardly, not even close to the entire trailer, and none of the other trailers. So is it safe to say, if you pull the four by eight sheets off? the lower sheets to expose a rim joist, floor joist, and the floor plates, which haven't been mentioned. Is it safe to say that you could find rot behind all of those as well? Specifically, there was rot in varying degrees across the buildings, yes. Okay. Just what to clarify, no, what, okay, sorry, just to clarify, the siding was removed on the on, perimeter on, of all the buildings. All That's trailers around the entire perimeter. All trailers on three sides of the trailers. The sides, the ends of the trailers facing the gymnasium. Uh -huh. The siding was determined to be in such good condition. It's protected by the overhang that that did not need to be removed because so, there was no damage to the outside. So siding. all of the siding on the lower portions of the trailers, 100% of the siding wasn't removed to look at the, the, the rim joist, floor joist, and, and the rest, rest of the flooring. Only on, th well, on three sides of each of the trailers. Okay, so not all of them. So, and there was some rot in other areas, right? That is correct, yes. Okay. How come there was no mention of the... Now, now <clears throat> you do agree to replace rotted floor joists. There, there's two ways to remedy it, right? You replace the floor joists or you sister up new, correct? And now, yeah. you're an architect, but I, I believe you know that, right? So it's safe to say, I know the answer to this, but I want you to say, it's safe to say that the carpeting and all the subflooring needs to be ripped up to replace floor joists or sister up, correct? 
uh, depending on the extent, um, it, depending on the level of rot, depending on the structure underneath. But to replace an entire floor joist, you would need to rip up the floor. Yes. Sure. Yeah. So how would you how would you remedy a rotted floor joist? 24 inches from end to here. How would you fix that without ripping up the subfloor? How? There's no way to do it. It's not possible. That is correct. Yeah. So we're talking about, we're talking about potential rot in the other trailers. There's already some rot you found, uh, minor compared to the other. So we're talking about potential issues, structural issues in the other trailers. We're talking, right now, we're, what's, what's the price tag now? $33,000 plus, correct? Or was that before the rot was found? I, I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm not, I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. But it, so the Mr. price tag Spike, is at do you, what? Do right you know now? the answer? That included some of the repairs, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah. So if once they really dig into things, and once we do further testing that's recommended on page six, section four, third bullet down, we're probably potentially over $100,000 now to remedy everything? Like, I'm asking, I, I don't know. It it's could, it potentially could be at over $100,000, yes. yes. yes so again, the money pit gets deeper and deeper and deeper. Here's, here's and I, listen, I was very grateful the last meeting I came to when your recommendation was not to put students in there and Sully he made the motion. I was very grateful, and I respect you for that. But the students are only half. We have teachers, all of faculty to consider here. I, my goal is to never see anybody in one of those money pits again. It's ridiculous that it's gone on this many years. They're trailers. They're temporary. Enough is enough. You got your money's worth. Let's get rid of them. That's all I'm asking. Just do the right thing. You did the right thing for the kids. You took that first step. Let's take it a step further. Let's take it a step further and make a promise to everybody here that nobody will ever be in those money pits again. Nobody. They're trailers. They're temporary. This is Wall Township, New Jersey, 2019. It's time. Let's get with the times. That's all I'm asking. Okay? Thank you. Ralph, thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. My name is Rosanna McLaughlin, and I have three children in Central School. I have a question for Brian, maybe one or two. Um, you mentioned your scope for doing the mold testing uh, was limited. Who decided on the scope of work? Was it you, or was it the board? Uh, I received a call from Mr. Romano or a text, as I said before, I don't really remember. Uh, you said we have an issue with these trailers and you come take a look. We go out there, we do, generally speaking, what we do is we go out and do, I don't want to say baseline, that's not really the right term, but we go out there and do an initial investigation to see what it is. Um, we find a lot of times it saves our clients a lot of money. Instead of going out there and spending all day, two days, three days, bringing everybody out there, spending a bunch of money, we can, hopefully we can find it in the first shot. Say, hey, we got this little problem, here we go. So that's what we've always done with the board, off and on. Um, so I have a question. Kind of like we so the scope of work you said was you go out, you do a baseline, not really a baseline. You determine what you need to do. How did you get to bioaerosol monitoring without assessing? That's, what we, that's the standard. We always do that to get a level of comfort as to what may be in the air. But you because, don't know where to sample. Well, there's four classrooms. So we put a, a, a sample in each classroom to be on the safe side. Okay. I have another question regarding sampling. You said it started at 11.15. It ended at 12.30. Uh, Were these? No, I think, uh, no. 11 o'clock? 11.31 and 12 o'clock, according to the chain of custody. Right okay. Here. Were the samples taken at the separate times or all four taken at the same time? Separate times. So we had, I had two people out there. Uh, I do not know if they were using two pumps or four pumps. Um, right? It wouldn't say. I mean, I'm looking at it. So you have sample going off 1131 and 1133 and 1144, 1146. So my guess based on this is we were using two pumps. Two pumps. Okay. Um, next question I have for you. Yes. I just lost my train of thought there. Take your time. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> what was my next question? I can't remember now. I'll have to come back. Um, 
I'll be here. To it. But thank you for your time. My pleasure. Well, does anybody, I'm sorry, does anybody else new have any questions? Oh, man, I have a new question. <laughs> well, you've been up all right. We, we want to let everybody get a, get a say first. Come on. I just have a quick question. Uh, it's, I guess for you, Brian, when we had mold in the past a few years ago, when the chimney, um, when that whole situation, I don't have that date, there were certain classrooms that were tested to find elevated numbers. Am I correct? Is my memory right? I have those reports, but I just want to make sure my memory's right. Were you the company that did those testing? We were involved in that, yes. Okay. Did you recommend, after the initial testing of sample classrooms, because they were samplings among the whole building, not every classroom, did you recommend that the district air out the building for the whole weekend with every window open before the next round of testing? I do not recall. That was a long time ago. Okay, really so know. for those of you that are new to the board, a few years ago we had mold in our building, as Brian talked about prior. There were samplings of mold testing done throughout Central School. Not every classroom, and interestingly, not even the classrooms that had had leaks for many years to them. After that was done, we were told that there were going to be remediation work done, and I believe it was done. I have no reason not to believe it was done. And that retesting was going to be done in those sampling classrooms, which in fact happened, and all of those numbers came back remarkably better. But the piece that's missing is that Central School was aired out for the whole weekend, and that testing was done after every single window was open and the custodian staff, custodial staff told us that as teachers and of course as as we know no one would wanted to, to speak up to that and it kind of took us back and at faculty meetings I asked that somebody come and explain this to us and explain what those as a staff what that meant and that never came to fruition and partially you know our fault for letting it pass but we can't let that happen anymore those classrooms that were tested back then need to be retested. And they need to be retested without all the windows open. And they need to be retested in all the classrooms that are leaking, not just in Central School. They need to be retested in every classroom that has had water. Every classroom where a ceiling tile has been changed because there was a leak over the weekend or after a snowstorm. If there's a ceiling tile that is just being changed out over and over, whether it's from a leak in the ceiling or a condensation problem, that room has to be tested. My room's one of those rooms. I had a, a, a leak, it, it, the, the stain on my carpet was about this big. I haven't been in yet to see if they got that up yet. My carpet's 22-ish years old. There's a humidifier in one of the resource rooms as of a week ago, right down from me, filling a garbage can from the, from the cafeteria. And these are, these are things that are ongoing. All I can speak of is my building. So I ask you to make sure that when your company comes in to test, that you're getting accurate testing, that there hasn't been a window open or a door open or a building open for a whole weekend. That's not accurate. I'm asthmatic. I've been sick every year. I can go to my allergist tomorrow and say, give me my records for every fall when I go there. Every single year I'm there. That's not a coincidence. I'm not sick now. I've been home, not sick. Interesting. And, and as Gail said, how many kids, and I teach special needs kids, how many special needs kids that already have immunosuppression situations and they're in these classrooms? It's not fair. You guys have a job to do. I know what your job is. I've been there. You have a job to do. Those checks and balances have to happen. Some of these were inherited. They've been going on for a really long time, but you can do better, and you need to make sure. You've given us your word, Ralph, and I believe you. I've known you for a long time. We're counting on you. Our kids are counting on you. I'm a big girl. I can go to the doctor. I can get antibiotic again this fall, but we're counting on you that our kids don't have to be sick, and all of our staff, our bus drivers, our special services people. That building at transportation should be condemned that building on Bailey Corner Road, oh yes, it's cute, it's charming, come on. It's how, uh, how many years old is that building? There's a lot of problems in this district. I look forward to working with you as a spokesperson. 
I'm not afraid to talk. <laughs> I'm not afraid to speak up, as you know. So please look into those testings that were done a couple years ago. There's a problem. That's that Band-Aid we were talking about. Let's not Band-Aid it anymore. We have to do better. Thank you. Did you, did you have a question? up there I couldn't see you so my name is John Lamagra uh, my son goes to Central School um, I'm gonna read a letter from my my wife because my wife couldn't make it and she really wanted to be here this is my son is an amazing ch child however he has several learning disabilities and medical conditions he has severe asthma and an allergy to mold since his early days at Central School there have been several classrooms that have an odd odor to them particularly Mrs. Knight's first grade classroom and Mrs. Schock's classroom last year. The smell of moisture within the school is obvious, and I have quest questioned the mold testing in Mrs. Knight's, Knight's classroom before. My son has had numerous spontaneous nosebleeds, breathing issues that require a nebulizer during the school day, and asthma attacks. My son has been in the trailers and described the smell there as similar to the aquarium in Camden. So <laughs> that is not what a school should smell like. Our neighbor's daughter, who was in the trailers last year, only told her parents that the trailers smelled awful and about the father and, I'm sorry, and about an ant infestation and how she had to hang her book bag high. When her father, and her father was shocked he did not realize he was unaware of the problems. She assumed her parents knew. Obviously, last year's parents were not notified about these horrific conditions. I was in the meeting a few weeks ago during the discussions of the mold in the trailers. I was appalled at the lack of common sense of most to the members on the board, that they did not want to test the trailers some of the board members wanted to put our children back in the trailers without even knowing that they, what was fully in there in the terms of mold and fungus and insect infestations. The disdain to the taxpayers who pay the Board of Education staff salaries was uh, palpable. I was shocked to, at how little regard the board members gave to the health and well-being of the children of Wall Township. I do believe, however, that there are some good and decent human beings on the board who spoke out and agreed to stop the work on the trailers to at least review other alternatives than to keep throwing money after bad. While the comment was made in a recent email that there was no covering up of anything, I ask you this, why would cost custodians be vacuuming up the trailers as a mold company was coming to test? And we talked about that already, I guess. Uh, why would the furniture that has not yet been proven to be contaminated was moved? Mr. Ro uh, Romano? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you said that they were cleaned and moved, mm -hmm. but they were cleaned in the bad classrooms. No, no. no they, were not, they were not cleaned in the okay. classrooms that had high levels. So they were not cleaned in the classroom that had high levels. Were the custodi custodians properly dressed? Did they have hazmat suits on? Did they wear breathing respirators? No, I stated before they did not. Okay. Well, they should have. You know, and this is a problem because I've heard from custodians who've told me they're afraid to open their mouths. And this has been going on for a long time. Okay, so let me read that. Let me that, go to, that culture is going to change. Yeah. We're committed well, to that here. I'm going to skip this but because I, I want to say a couple things. I think the big problem is that the transparency. Okay, I think this could have been really nipped in the bud if someone had just sent the email as soon as this happened and said, hey, listen, we're having problems in the school. We're having problems with the trailers. We're working on it. We're, but it had to get leaked out through certain teachers or certain custodians. And that's not good. That's not good. That, that needs to change. And that attitude needs to change. 
we pa we're parents. We're concerned, and you should be concerned about the children. It's not about money. It's not about a job. It's about teaching our children in a healthy, safe environment. That brings me to another point. Those trailers, they're not safe. I don't even think they have insulation in the walls. You could shoot a gun right through them. They're not safe. Those kids, those trailers should be gone. They should be gone. What you do with them, light them on fire. Get rid of them. But those kids need to be in the classroom, uh, in, a, in the proper classroom. And, and that's another question I have. No one seems to answer. If they can move these four classes into the school, why didn't they? Why were they still utilizing these piece of garbage trailers? That, that kids have been complaining about. They smell like the aquarium in Camden. Ant infestations. Why? why? Why now, all of a sudden, we can put them in the school? And does anybody know, how old are those trailers? But they were bought used, from what I understand. So how truly old are they? We don't know. They've outlived their usefulness. They need to go, and we need to build a proper school. We pay a lot of money in taxes. Everybody here will tell you that. Our taxes are not cheap, OK? My friend who just left, his taxes, he has two buildings. It's like over $25,000. He's got one child. We need to start putting some money into the schools. And we need to start listening to people and being transparent before things get out of hand like this. Thank you. Mr. Schmeiss, do you know how old they are? When... Um, 1998. Okay, thank you. Sir, did you hear that they were? Yes. Okay. Hi. Kim Housling, born and raised in Wall Township, went to Old Mill School up till graduating Wall High School in 1992. Proud, proud Wall Township girl here. Um, what I saw from you, Ralph, last week, thank you for being our voice and um, for making some common sense, for having some common sense through this board of Mr. Smythe and Superintendent Dyer, who I have no faith in whatsoever. Um, my son is a fifth grader this year and he was going to be put into the trailers and I thank God for you Ralph that my son is not going to be put into those trailers and no children will be put into those trailers. Um, I am requesting that there be some kind of air quality testing throughout each year to go in each school, each classroom. My son as well um, has been on nebulizers and asthma medication and been to allergists and gone through stuff that he should not have had to gone th go through at his age. Um, I just, it, it amazes me that, that the schools have gotten this bad. Um, I, I just, I don't even, I, it, I'm beside myself. But I am requesting to please do some further testing on the main buildings of the schools to make sure that our children are safe and our staff, our teachers and our staff are in the most healthy environment possible. We are Wall Township. We do pay high taxes. We should not be dealing with anything like this right now. I mean, I, Born and raised, Ralph, I have faith in you, man. I know you were a wall boy through and through as well. And uh, Sully, same. I, I pray to God that you guys figure this out and you do stay transparent and figure out how to work with the community and the schools a little better and that it is, there is transparency. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing to coming to the board meetings. And uh, please, please just, you know, do what's best for the kids. Please, I, I beg of you guys. The, the, they have enough to deal with outside of school. Let school be their safe place. Thank you, that's all I have. Thank you. Is anyone else that have a question, comment? Kathleen Duran, Wall Township. Um, I'm still trying to put together 
parts of it and I and I'm sorry that I'm not up to speed uh, with everything that's transpired here so if my questions were asked before I came tonight uh, please just let me know that but mr. Romano why was partner engineering called in that Sunday why did you text or call um, Brian I didn't call them on a Sunday it oh was I thought the, he had stated yeah uh, no no I, I thought it was. I'm not 100 percent too sure. I don't have my records, and I said I thought it was. You did, yeah. So, so that's why I thought yeah, it was. It was the, the Monday or the Tuesday. And why were they called in, in the very in, at the very beginning? To do an assessment of the building, to do air tests. Why that? Why at that time? Because of the, as I stated before, the extent of the water damage uh, materials in the building. Was your call to partner engineering related in any way to um, contact your contact with the Board of Health? No, not at all. Were you aware at any time that uh, concerned parents had contacted the Board of Health? No. Uh, Ms. Duran, th do you have questions in regards to the report or the engineers? Because yeah. That's just, okay. I'm just trying to, yeah. No, I, I was just, that was one question I had. Okay. Um, for the partner engineering testing, um, your report shows the entry into the trailers at 1131 and completion of the testing at 12 p.m. Um, so in 29 minutes, there was four classrooms tested. Is uh, that yeah. correct? Yeah, they're tested. Each, each air sample is 10 minutes. Okay. And did the, the, the two gentlemen who, who conducted the testing, did they carry equipment in with them to the building? Well, sampling equipment, yes. And what's that look like? Um, a general description. Little metal boxes, almost like a little, I don't know how to describe like it. Like a modem? No. Something no. the size uh, of a modem? Depend, depends. We have different, several different types of pumps. Some are similar to a modem, a little bigger than that, or like a square, and some are round. And they carried one. that equipment into the building and left them there? Uh, into the, the trailers, I mean. They would right? go into the trailers and they would presumably stay with them while they're doing it. And did they forward. exit the building with that equipment or they leave it behind to continue testing no, automatically? No, it's only a 10-minute sample, so they, they wouldn't leave them behind. They would take them out with them? Yes. Because, um, first of all, it just seemed that just six minutes approximately in each classroom seems a little too quick to actually conduct the 10-minute test you're talking of. Well, they weren't in there for six minutes. Well, we have 29 minutes total time in four classrooms that were tested, and then a minute or two to walk between the two well, trailers. I, well, as I said, I don't know if they had two or four pumps. So in theory, and I don't know this, Joe could have been in one and two, Dan could have been in three and four. But still, it was about six minutes per classroom, no? Well, it couldn't be, because it it's a 10-minute sample. So how did this all get done? You, one pump for two classrooms? No. What, yeah, Cl classroom one, one pump goes in there to set it up for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Classroom two, they set up a pump for 10 minutes. Classroom three, same thing. Whether they were done, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure I understand your line of questioning, but mm -hmm. there, there were two samples set up. I mean, 1131 and 1133. So my guess is uh, uh, buildings one and two were set up by Joe. Let's say. I'm just throwing Joe. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's true. Joe set them up in there. Mm -hmm. And, and Dan was in the other room, or Dan was in room number one taking a sample, and Joe was in room number two taking a sample. And and in your experience, that's normal amount of time for them to conduct the sampling experiment. It's, the it's sampling, a ten-minute I mean. sample, so yeah. I mean, you need ten minutes. It runs for ten minutes. It's really simple. You, it's a you have the the pump. You got a tigon tube. Well, you got a rotometer which calibrates the flow of the pump. Goes through a tigon tube. Goes through a stand, and you attach the cassette onto the sampling cassette. It's a little microscope slide inside a little air cassette. It runs for 10 minutes, you shut it off, you put the um, sticky tape, for lack of a better term, back on it so it can't be cross-contaminated. You send it to a lab, they open it up and they analyze it under a microscope. My, my concern, and I know people may not understand why I'm asking, but I heard someone earlier here this evening say that two people were seen exiting the trailers carrying only clipboards at the end of the testing. And I'm trying to figure out whether the testing equipment was left in for an extended period of time or not. You've said not, so I'm a little concerned. Right, so, so the discrepancy between what you've just described, which I understand, uh, with what somebody else had said here that they had seen exiting the so building. So let me explain why that may have been. And I'm mm -hmm. giving you a theory. Okay. But this is what my guys are taught. You go in, you do your sampling first. You don't want to disturb too much because you don't want to kick up stuff. You go in and do your sampling. You bring the equipment out. Then you go back in with your clipboard, your flashlight, your whatever, and do your investigation. So that may have been what that person saw. 
perhaps. Okay. Um, um, does anyone know the name of the other firms that uh, were uh, that gave in quotes uh, for the job other than uh, RIS and HTHL? That information, the contractors. Yeah, we well, we know HTHI did the work. Risk started. Um, I had um, Richard Coco, which is Chelsea Builders quote. Um, George Custos, uh, he quoted. Um, uh, Bravo Construction quoted. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that he didn't quote. He looked at the job, but told me he couldn't get it done in our time frame, so he did not provide a quote. Um, and I believe maybe one more oh, off the top of my head. I I don't know, but yeah, about four. Okay, Mike, I I still have a concern about the the monies that were transferred, Brian, uh, Brian Smythe, the um, the thirty thousand and then the sixty thousand transferred. Mike, I have a concern about it, Mr. Um, Rand. It, we're, that's not for tonight. It's just questions of the professionals that did the reports. No, I was going to add. I am trying to figure out how what the timing of the learning of the damage to the to the buildings uh, how they related to the the timing of the two large transfers of money at some yep. point I will just point out that there was not two transfers there was one transfer that in just for clarification that's what was discussed at the last board meeting correct yeah, you're talking about the transfer of monies that came out of the primary school fund, Mr. Smith. Is that what you're referring to? The transfer of monies that came out of the primary primary school fund, Mr. Rand. That's, that's not it. for tonight. We we discussed that at the last board meeting. Okay. Well, I still don't have a time frame, but I'm sure you're going to look into it and get back to me. I'm trying to figure out at what point that the funds were transferred because what happens here was an initial bid that was a uh, quote. That didn't go out to bid because the quotes the damage looked like it was a little bit at some point mr smythe became aware uh, and mr romano became aware that the scope of work was going to have to be ex expanded and the cost of the work was going to be bigger um, but if they knew that at some point and failed to do the normal bidding process then there may be a problem here that's what i'm trying to get to uh, there may be a problem in the timing because if mr smythe or mr romano knew that there was damage there that put the scope of the work above that thirty thousand dollar transfer and it was something that was should have been put out to bid according to state law you may have a problem that's all i'm trying to highlight for you if um and that's why i'm calling the timing into question i'm trying to figure that out but i'm sure you'll get back to me thank you so much we we will I will get the records and, and we will have uh, that answer. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I'm gonna go back up. Uh, is this a question for the two professionals? Yes. Betsy Cross, I live in Wall. I was actually there at 12 o'clock when your gentleman came out with the clipboards. So that's what I want to get a handle of. So we saw them come in. We asked what, I asked what they were doing. They said they couldn't say. I said, who could say? They said, Brian Nemeth. So I wrote your name down. Um, I did put in an immediate access for a number of items from Brian Smythe, and he has not given them back. Um, there are some, definitely some things wrong here. Um, Brian budgeted. He talked about this in September of 2018, the work on the trailers, and then he budgeted $60,000 in February. Ms. But Cross, we're questions for these professionals. I know. My issue is Brian budgeted $60,000, but he only did the quotes, so we didn't have to get the proper bids. Um, we got a lot of work here. How much was your work? How much did you charge us for what you did when you came in? Yeah, at, um, I'm going to have to double check that. Brian, do you know? Or Ralph, do you know how much they charge? I, I do not. I don't have that, that bill. Can you Mr. ask Mr. Smythe? Do you, Does he do know how much they idea? charged? The estimate provided when you were first contacted, um, not by you, but by the principal of the firm, uh, estimated that the work would not exceed $1,500. Their, their your bill, $1,500? Their would bill not, was? Would not exceed $1,500. Okay, so $1,500 here. But they didn't come in when they should have came in. They should have came in in July before the other contractor came in. Well, we don't the, know that. What we do know Ralph, is that you don't know a lot. 
You know, I mean, we're going through these minutes and getting these documents. There's some major problems here. And you, as the president of F and F, somebody should have caught this. Not one sentence, the work's going to be done by the start of school. If Brian didn't disclose to you that there were severe structural damage, that's a problem. How do we trust him with other issues in the district? I don't trust him. I after seeing this... I, I know of mold problems in all the other schools. How do we trust somebody like this that was hiding the structural damage, knew it was going to be 60, now I see the transfers, I total 99,000, Scott was up here, it could be 100. The, you got some problems here, Ralph, and I think you need to, somebody on the board needs to ask for an independent investigation because there's too, it's too wishy-washy. Oh, I got a text from Rob and... I got a call. I came on on this date. Right, Ms. Cross, this do, should do you have happened. Have a, do you have a question? What, we, you've said these concerns before. I know. We, we've all heard and them. Right and, now, and we will I take everything into consideration. No, right now, tonight, I think you need to do an independent investigation. Cost a couple thousand dollars or ask the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office. But something's not right here. And you were going to do all this work, hide a lot of it. Shove the kids right, back Cross, in there. The, no, Ralph. No, no La kids are going in there. Ralph. What? It kids would your, have been in there what if, is your some, question? if people had not put Ms. the. Ms. Cross, why was what is your Brian question? hiding and not getting quotes when we, he knew the the numbers were going to be over forty thousand when he should have gotten bids? We don't know that's facts. Why did he budget sixty thousand dollars? I got it right here. He budgeted sixty thousand dollars. Because that's what February. that's what the board budgeted at the time for repairs. That that's well, what we did. Well, where did you come up with the number? Pull it out of a hat, or know that that's the work that you needed to have done? It was we in the September minutes. It was also in the September minutes. Okay. Do, do you have Do you I have a question for the professionals? Because that that's what we're here to do tonight. Uh, let me see if I had another question on that. Um, disappointed that the two people that were doing the the um, the mold testing, uh, not the mold testing, we didn't do the mold testing, are not here. That just didn't even make sense to have you here because you weren't there. The other thing is we need to do the surface testing. Everybody keeps mentioning it. Go back and do the surface testing in those trailers to know if you've now contaminated the building by taking stuff out of it. I was in those trailers right after they put those people came out. My pictures are time-stamped. So the, the rugs were disgusting. And we weren't going to change them. We were just going to clean them. So, you know, as of Tuesday, you know, you were still looking to fix this up. Had the contractor still working if they were, they were told to stop. You need to do an investigation to figure out why this went so terribly, terribly wrong. And you risked <coughs> injuring students and staff. Because to just do, get calls okay. after the Board of Health. Everybody came in after the Board of Health do, was do coming in. Do you have a in. question? Yes. Thank Tonight, you. you need to do an investigation. And if you don't, Ralph, I'm going to think that maybe you might be somewhat in on it. Because well, be any some, board member. Ms. you would be somewhat wrong. Okay. okay? So then so do I'm, an I'm investigation. So I'm just going to put that on the record. Okay. The board right now is entertaining questions for our professionals. What we decide to do after this is going to be a board decision. Right, and I hope somebody says to do an investigation because everything that's come back from Brian Smythe, okay. he Ms. hasn't Cross, given Ms. anything Cross, back that okay. has been requested. Question. Do you have a question for these three individuals? Yes. Tell me Thank again you. the name of the rice. What, what um, co-op are they in again? Can you spell it for me? Ed Data. E-D-D-A-T-A. Yes. E-D hyphen D-A-T-A. Ed data, and that's a co-op, and I can yes. Google that right here? Okay, thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Mario Zecca. I'm a wall resident. Uh, I have two, two children. They go to uh, Central School. I have a question for the architects. Uh, the company was RIS, the initial company, right? Did they ever give a detailed reason why they didn't want to continue with work? We were not involved at that time. Okay. Does anybody have any detailed reason why they didn't want to continue? Mr. Romano, you had the dealings with them. Do you, what were the conversations like? Yeah, they, well, when they started, they started pulling out some T111s. Some siding came off. 
um, and what they said was that um, the work scope was outside of what they quoted um, and there was substantial work that needed to be done to the framing um, and you know more deterioration than they had initially you know thought so they decided that wasn't work that they were able to do if it was outside of their quote why wouldn't they why wouldn't you guys just redo the budget to actually fix it correctly I don't understand you had a quote. Yeah. They said it's out of their scope of work. Okay. Didn't they ask you, hey, can we redo the quote? Or did they just, they said we're leaving? Well, they quoted, they did do that. Okay. Initially, when That's they, yeah, they, they quoted a second time with okay. a different work scope. So, and then they, they just and didn't meet what they Yes, what and they then write. again, they came a second time. And what they did was they said, you know, our recommendation is these trailers be scrapped. Okay. That's, that's what they, they should yeah. have done. You know, you finally found a contractor that has a conscience. So, let me tell you. Because that, that's exactly what they happened. They declined to do the work. You're going to throw a Band-Aid on these trailers and put our kids uh, in. Every, if, please. I, I don't want to go crazy. No, I'm no, just I'm, telling you. No, I just want everybody a, behind you to we, respect. You can't have our children in these trailers. They're not going to be in the trailers. I know. And They're I'm glad never you did it. I appreciate okay. it. But let me tell you something. Why am I really upset? Because I know they're going to throw a Band-Aid and just put new siding on the damn thing. And that was going to, they were to send them back in. Yep. Don't tell me they weren't going to do that. Because it took people on Facebook putting pictures out to see this problem. Then there was an uprising. The news showed up and everything. Now you guys are all concerned. It's because the news showed up that you're concerned? I'm serious now. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I had a daughter in that classroom t two years ago, and she was sick all the time. We were wondering what the hell was wrong with her. Now I know. Thank you. Thank you. you want to say There was Miss Cross, please don't yell out. Get the information to us. Hi, good evening. My name is Kim Hansen. No, one second, Mr. Just one comment. With regard to the work that was going to be done and the idea that things were going to be covered up and the repairs were not being made, um, that is so far from the truth. The, the, the reason why the contractor provided a second quote was because of the damage that was identified when the siding was removed. The difficulty was trying to assess the extent of that damage. We asked for a worst case scenario proposal from the contractor. He provided $60,000 if he was to remove all the T111, which at the time was already known that that was not going to be necessary. We wanted him to repair the rim joists, sister up the framing, whatever was necessary. We were asking for direction as the contractor, how would you best repair these damaged end floor joists and the rim joists? Um, he did not want to continue the work. The comment by the foreman out on the job when I asked the question, well, how would you address this? And he stated, do you have a match? That's not constructive as of July 16th when we're trying to get the trailers renovated. You know, we were replacing damaged siding with the idea of vinyl siding it, not to cover anything up, but to protect it for future years so that we didn't have the continual damaged wood siding from, uh, from rain or whatever was causing it. The siding was removed and between RIAS leaving the job and obtaining additional quotes and bringing in HTHI on August 16th, so we're talking about at least three weeks, the siding was exposed. It was removed, the framing was evident that there was damage there. If there was a, a the, the idea or the thought that we were looking to cover things up and hide it, it would not have been open and exposed for three weeks. It would have been covered over, plywood, it would have been hidden, but it wasn't. It was left remaining, and the goal was to get a new contractor in there. HTHI, like, reviewed it, was aware of what the work was going to be necessary, but not to the extent, because, again, we didn't know the extent until we removed the siding. So there was no intention of slapping siding on there and putting kids back in the classroom, you know. The siding was being removed wherever it was damaged. It was going to be replaced with plywood. When the framing was identified, we, not because of a health department, not because of News 12, we contacted the engineers when the HTHI started removing rim joists and there was extensive damage on the floor joists on how we best need to fix this problem you know, with the professionals 
approval with their with their seal because it would be necessary for the purposes of a of a building department but nothing was going to be covered over the sheetrock on the inside it was already removed because anywhere especially around the windows where there was water damage where the floor was um found to be soft we had metal plates on it by the exterior door that was going to be removed and replaced so nothing was being covered over and the intent was the project was to be done by the start of school that was the goal but we were not covering anything up you didn't discuss it in Ms. Cross, please. that was the cover-up you didn't disclose it mr Smyth. hi my name is kim hansen i am a wall resident i have a daughter um, entering second grade at central school and i was not planning on speaking tonight but this obviously has taken the public um, by surprise and as you can imagine, um, we moved to Wall five years ago for the school system. And to be completely honest with you, I'm disgusted that this is even occurring in our town. We do not live in the ghetto. We live in Wall Township. And we come here for the school district. And I have complete faith in you, Mr. Adonisio. I don't even know you, but from hearing you speak, that you are for these students and you are for the school district and you are for the staff. My concern is school opens in seven days for these teachers and in nine for our children, my daughter, who will be on that second floor where that furniture has been moved to. So my question to you is, do you feel that this building is safe for these students to enter in nine days? Yes, I do. But a side note to that, as I mentioned to Mr. Romano, everything's going to get scrubbed down. Similar to what, similar to what we would do if there was a, um, a stomach bug in the school system where, you know, they go in and wipe everything down. That's what we're going to do because... So we our, have always your word that by September 3rd, when these teachers enter that building, that it is going to be clean the way it needs to be cleaned so that their health isn't at risk and our children's health isn't at risk. We you, have your word on you that. You absolutely have my word. Because I'm not sure we have the word from some other people on this, on this panel right here, but I really do trust in you that you are going to make sure that that building is it safe is. And, and for these students. And I can tell you that the other members here feel exactly the same. We're, we are 100% uh, unified in this and it's absolutely okay. going to get done and we will get updates and you know, I, I'll see if we can go one step further. Uh, when this work is completed, can we send an email out to all the parents in the school, Ms. Dyer? Sure. Thank you. Um, and my last question I have for you, and I'm not sure if you can answer this or maybe this is something the board is going to discuss, is we obviously know these trailers are an issue. Um, we've all heard this over and over, um, and it has become extremely public um, and embarrassingly public, to be honest with you. Um, what is going to happen? Is a fence going to be put around the perimeter of those trailers by September 3rd so that nobody is going to be injured with what this premises looks like? Because honestly, it looks disgusting. And second, our children are going to be playing on that playground. So not only have you now taken classrooms away from them to in-house fifth graders and space for the rest of the children that's already completely overpopulated in that building, are you going to make this premises safe for them to enter on Thursday of next week? Because I'm a public school teacher myself and this would not happen in the district I teach in because it's, it's disgusting to be honest with you. So I want to ensure that that perimeter is going to be safe for all of these children to enter school by next Thursday morning at eight o'clock in the morning? The answer is yes. We, we were talking about it earlier, and I believe the, the plan will be to secure it with plywood, Mr. Romano, so nobody can get under the trailers uh, and then take down that, that yellow fencing because it'll be restored to what it looked like previously, except it'll be plywood, probably unpainted um, to protect anybody from going underneath. So or touching it or going around it or being able to still play on that playground. You will be able to use the playground. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome.
Robin Cervantes. I live in Wall Township. Um, I was here a year ago talking about the trailers to you all, um, about the rot and how bad they looked. I didn't know it was underneath them, but I had, I walked, as I said, past it for five times a week at least and saw the deterioration over the years. And I just want to know how many times was, were the panels repaired in that specific to that section? Because last summer, that same section had a brand new piece of wood that was unpainted when I had stood at this same podium a year ago and commented that I was glad to see it was being repaired and hoped that it would be painted too. I didn't realize it was rotting from the underneath or whatever, I mean, obviously what we've seen. But I have to wonder, again, my son was in the inaugural, inaugural class, the fourth, like, fourth graders were in there um, in 2007. <laughs> And it was great when, when they went in, they were, they were great. And I understood why they went in. We had had several years of failed budgets. We had no money in capital reserve, none, zero, if I'm not mistaken. And we had to lease purchase these trailers, so I get it. But three years later, we decided to extend it and then extend it some more, and um, here we are. How come they were allowed to disintegrate like this? Who's in charge? When it comes down to it, at that first year, at the, at the third year, I believe that's when you had to ask for an extension, why wasn't it determined that, you know, we're going to take them off cinder blocks and put a real siding on it so that it doesn't deteriorate? I mean, at the time, it was still an asset. I mean, they cost $350,000. But over the last 10 years, they've become worthless, and they've now become a, you know, a liability. So I really take issue as a former board member who sat in facilities meetings and sat in hundreds of committee meetings. We all take, <laughs> take it seriously. We ask questions and we're asked to trust. We are asked to trust our administrators who are gonna give us those committee minutes. And so that I don't have to put my construction helmet on and climb underneath a trailer to see that there's mold. I'm asked to trust, and I feel I was let down in those meetings where we were asked to extend the trailers for another year. Well, <laughs> is there supposed to be a structural assessment done? Is there supposed to be somebody pushing screwdrivers in the wood to see if it's rotten? I mean, <laughs> we're, we're volunteers that go up there and we have faith, we are supposed to have faith in the administrators and I don't feel like I was given the correct information, and I'm, I'm mad. How many students sat in those rooms and had rotten wood underneath their feet? I'm, I'm disgusted, I really am, and it's, it's contingent on all of you. Your board members, you got three seats, four seats, I don't know how many seats are open, but whoever comes on, it's a tough job, you gotta ask questions and hold people accountable, because that's what it's about. Hold people accountable, because the kids can't get up here and talk. Really, it's a, it's a really important job, guys. I know that I have faith in the people that are sitting here right now, I really do. But you gotta ask a lot of questions, truly. Thank you. Mr. Smythe, could you um, give us some background on uh, the approval uh, of these, how, how that goes. It, it's just, they just don't sit there forever. There, there's more to it than just that, correct? Uh, correct, as a temporary instructional space, the district passes a resolution each year and makes an application to the uh, State Department of Education for uh, use of the trailers as temporary space. We request approval. The county executive superintendent's office um, issues that approval um, sometimes coming out doing an inspection of the trailers uh, i can't speak that they do it each year thank you. thank you anyone else have any questions of our professionals uh, miss cross what betsy cross um i guess my question is when 
At the July 1st meeting, you talked about the renovation of the Central School trailers will be done by the co-op vendor for 38000 Work was scheduled to start on 710. That's all that's in there. Then in the August 5th minutes... Because that's all that was talked about. I know. Then the, in the August 5th minutes, all it says is one sentence. Renovations of Central School trailers will be done by the start of school. Now, to me, this is the big problem for Mr. Smythe. Why didn't Mr. Smythe tell you that... The first contractor, Rice Construction, who we've asked five times now, and we finally got it out of out of uh, somebody about what the real damage was that they said to scrap them. Why in the world didn't Brian say, you know what, we might want to rethink this because the contractor was in, we didn't have our engineer in. Right, Miss Cross, no, no, you, no, you, Brian, no, no, Ralph, yes. This do meeting wasn't question? set up to only ask the engineers. It's that's an exactly, F and F meeting. That's exactly how it was set up. It doesn't say that anywhere. That's exactly doesn't how it was say set that up. anywhere. So the I'm problem, gonna I'm gonna ask you, do you have questions for these professionals? Is, Mr. Smythe did no. not disclose to the board, Cross, this the is not F and F this committee. This is not the forum for this. It is it's a forum. You need not... to do an investigation. Why Brian was okay. hiding this? Ms. Do Cross, an investigation. Do you have a question for our three professionals? Here, Ralph, Ralph, you're the F and F chair. You wrote one sentence: renovations of Central School trailers will be done by the start of school. You're not concerned that Brian was hiding the information that the guy, the builder, came in and said, "Scrap the buildings." I mean, are you? Are you, if you don't get an investigation and we're going to let this guy be in charge of 77 million? Ms. Cross, we, maybe we've we, heard you investigation. We've heard that several times tonight. I'm yeah. sure at this point it's been written down and it's etched into our brain. Uh, this I think somebody th should propose it. If you board, don't propose it tonight, then you're trying, in my opinion, I've been here a lot of years, in my opinion, you're trying to hide what happened and just move on. Ms. Cross, and you can't do that, that, that with Mr. Smythe absolutely now incorrect this last situation. Because, uh, what was originally planned was this was just going to be a, a small F and F committee meeting. I, I didn't get an email that said that. Well, because the decision was made by us, the board members, that we wanted to have this in public, and we wanted the professionals to be here, so yeah, people could ask the questions. Yeah, but you didn't even have the two questions. guys that did the report. You didn't have the exterminator here. You don't have the dates when you were here. I mean, come well, with actual reports. Where's Mr. Smite's timeline that he should have? If he does a timeline, it will prove he should not be in charge of seventy-seven million dollars and in charge of children. Children. That is obvious from everything we've heard here well, tonight. He's not in charge of ch children. He's in charge of the buildings that the children are in. And right now, he was looking to hide all this information. All right, Cross, he hid it from F and F. Cross, do you have he a question hid it for from the professionals? F and F. Because you should do Ms. an investigation, Cross, or else you're trying to hide it yourself. We're not trying to hide anything. That's then why you're sitting here. Do an investigation. Thank you. Is there anybody else with any questions? Seeing none, we will close public comment. Um, so before we adjourn, uh, did Mr. Sweet, did you or Mr. Romano? Um, I know on here it says current facility projects. Was there any updates that you wanted to give in regards to anything? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, a couple projects that we've been doing this summer. District paving, um, all paving has been completed with exception to the old mill uh, play area. That's going to be done September 3rd and 4th. Um, high school media center was carpeted. Uh, that was completed. Uh, primary masonry repairs. Uh, that is actually in progress and will be wrapped up prior to the start of school. Um, air conditioning phase one installations. All units are uh, scheduled to arrive on the 29th, which is this Thursday. Um, West Belmar is completed um, uh, with the rest of the buildings, most of them being uh, completed by start of school. Uh, you, you anticipate them hooked up and running? Yes. Okay, that's good. And that, that, again, that's most of them, not all most, of them. Right. Um, do you know if they've been shipped already? Are they in transit? Did they give you an update on that? Uh, yeah, they'll be here the 20th. Oh, well, okay, all, so that's a solid date. Okay. Yes. Well, well, just a clarification. Yeah. It's as solid as it can be because they've changed it multiple times. Okay. Just to give you an idea, as of yesterday, we were getting three of the four from Allenwood School, seven of the eight for Old Mill School, and eight of the 13 for the high school. They were supposed to arrive tomorrow, 
and they didn't even know when the others would be shipped because they were only being built on this past Saturday. We find out today that the six that we were waiting on that were built on Saturday are actually airship. They may arrive before the other ones. Um, to, so they may arrive tomorrow, and the land ones may end up arriving on Thursday. But to the best of their ability, they're ensuring that all the units should be delivered by Thursday. Contractors are going to have uh, uh, staff here. They're going to work Saturday as well. Uh, all the units will be in place. They'll all be as best as they can, operational for the purposes of ventilation. Good chance there'll be air conditioning will be connected, but uh, the heat will, have, will not be, uh, but that's not necessary for the start of school. Okay, so. thank you. Uh, West Belmar, the main sewer line has been repaired, um, and uh, also boiler number two at West Belmar was uh, a crack section was repaired, um, and that is complete, and that's all I have. Okay, great. Uh, so the, the, the board members, uh, we've had a discussion about how we're going to move forward with F&F, &F, and it's the, the feeling of the board that we are going to continue doing F&F &F meetings as a meeting of the whole board um, going forward and possibly looking at putting, um, as we did last year, curriculum as part of uh, that meeting. So we, we handle two committee meetings in one night, um, and we're also going to move forward with uh, personnel being part of executive session since that's already a normal thing instead of having a separate committee for that because there was some um, opinion I believe that boards shouldn't have personnel committees uh, th that was discussed I believe so we're gonna eliminate that and then we'll have a policy committee and in the next day or so since we are a little short um, we're going to have some people filling in on committees until we get a full board and uh, appreciate everybody's support. Does anybody have anything else? Anything we didn't cover? Um, I just want to put in a request that over the next few months we have uh, some school tours, at least for the board of ed members. Um, I think based on the um, comments that were made, we come from our own experiences, whether we have children or not in the schools, that when you have firsthand eyes on things, you can better contribute to this um, conversation and, and review. And um, so I'm just putting that out there. I think that will be very helpful to the assessment. Absolutely. So I, I think that's something um, and we talked about a while ago, uh, probably through Mrs. Dyer um, and then Mr. Romano, uh, individual tours, I guess, or, or you know, small groups, whatever works. So, we'll, yes, yeah, lucky. Well, so, Chris, uh, one thing I just wanted to say, um, I apologize for not being at the last two meetings. I was in Florida um, in July, and um, last um, last month I, I could not miss um, at a conference. Um, for my work that I could not miss. Um, and I apologize also, but uh, on September 9th, I will not be here um, as well. I'm actually turning 40, and my wife has a birthday party planned for me, so I wanted to let you know ahead of time. Um, and it's not that I don't want to be here um, or anything like that. I'm just it, the way the stars have aligned um, on a couple of different occasions over the last uh, last couple of months I have not been able to be here um, and I, I apologize for that because um, I do take um, this seriously um, and uh, I, you know I try to put my best effort in um, so just in case anybody had felt like I was like trying to no. skip we, out on the tough meetings or anything no, like we, that. we appreciate it and, and you know we appreciate you getting older so. I appreciate it as well. I hope to continue to get old. If I could just ask a question. Um, you mentioned September 9th, which was the date that was scheduled for Finance and Facilities Committee. And Mr. Adonisio, you just mentioned that um, you've had discussions where you're going to have committee meetings as meetings of the whole. So I would just request that you let us know when you've scheduled those meetings we, because we have not been informed. No, we, we, this was a discussion today that we... Uh, several of us had and then talked to everybody um, so the, Monday the 9th would have been it the other thing we don't want to conflict with are back to school nights and, and is that 
the Tuesday the 10th, a back to school night? Um, right. Monday the 9th is a back to school night. Tuesday the 10th is. Wednesday the 11th. Uh, Thursday the 12th. Um, so we had committee meetings scheduled for Tuesday the 3rd, Wednesday the 4th. Um, so if they're going to be full meetings of the board instead, obviously those need to be advertised and, and um, Mr. Smythe and I are not in the loop on that, so. So can we do uh, an F and F curriculum meeting on Tuesday the 3rd? Is that enough time to advertise? Mr. Smythe? I would be in favor of that. And so that was the night you had scheduled for curriculum and policy, but you want to change it to a meeting of yes. the full board. Okay. Yes. And then we'll discuss the, the policy and the policy. That, that's all that would be left then. Right. And policy, are, there's only one policy that was going to be discussed on first reading, so you could probably just postpone that. Okay. Could we add that to the uh, F and F meeting that night, the, the committee of the whole? You it's could only one. do committee of the whole on Tuesday the third. That would be curriculum F and F and policy if that's what you would like to do. Yeah, there's only one policy, right? That's if it's gonna be very quick policy, I think that that would be fine. Okay. Right, and so that would be a meeting where no action is taken. That would be a workshop meeting, correct? Correct, thank you. Uh, seven o'clock seven o'clock seven o'clock good for everybody seven o'clock it is same bat time same bat channels yes. right. well I have another question I'm sorry yep. um, considering personnel was going to be a topic on Wednesday the 4th are you saying that you're just comfortable delaying personnel to executive session on Tuesday the 24th yes uh, based on um, your recommendation with that one I'm just clarifying okay. thank you yes and then uh, actually one other thing uh, since we won't have uh, a regular meeting um, before back to school night uh, we would I think it would be a good idea if we did like we did last year for those that were here uh, having Board of Ed members in the schools for back to school night um, so what you can do is uh, We'll look at the dates, see where the school, what, which school is having what. We'll send out an email um, if you want to sign up, and then we'll give it to Ms. Dyer, and uh, she can notify the proper authorities to that. Uh, I agree. That was great last year. Yeah, a lot of good feedback. So, Anybody have anything else? No? Seeing none, could I have a motion to adjourn? Or did you have something? I was just going to thank um, thank the oh, folks for coming yes. and, and make the motion. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Motion by Chris. Can I have a second? Second. second. All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. All right. Good night. Thank you for coming.